I guess know, was Top Gear not considered prime time? It's cable, well, it right? It was cable. Yeah. Was, was hosting NASCAR not considered prime time? Yes and no. I mean, I think we can make arguments for okay. in both of those. Well, not where they're like that. Uh, <laughs> not where you get a hero shot. Yeah, and they actually used my body this time. Not like <laughs> we were laughing the day you were at SEMA and they were releasing Hot uh, Top Gear. I was like. That's not my body. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah on the poster. Put, they put like, his oh, face on a body double. Yeah. And they were like, because the dude had what I would call banana hands. Like, his fingers <laughs> look twice as long as normal fingers. And I was like, I've never worn a cardigan in my life. But I was like, Did, was I too big? Like, what happened? They were like, That's no, so it's funny. not you. It's just your body. All the pictures you were facing this one way. We needed your legs to be facing the other way. And I was like, nobody's going to tell me. <laughs> They're like, I don't. I think we thought you would notice. I was like, What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Off the Record. We love Off the Record, and I know that you guys love Off the Record. You tell me all the time when Off the Record saves you money. The way it works is it's very simple. If you get a ticket, a moving violation of any kind, from the small to the very big, you call Off the Record. Well, you don't actually call. You go to offtherecord.com slash TST or download the Off The Record app and use code TST10. Then Off The Record will set you up with a qualified attorney in the jurisdiction where you got that ticket. They will fight that ticket on your behalf. You don't have to go to court. You don't have to do anything besides scan or send a photo of that ticket and pay a very modest fee for their services. And our discount code TST10 on the Off The Record app or Off The Record dot com slash TST on the web will get you 10% off all legal services, not just this time, but every time. That way, Off the Record can fight that ticket on your behalf. Make sure those points stay off the record because it's never just about the fine of the ticket, right? A lot of people go, ah, well, I'll just plead guilty, get it over with, pay the fine. But it's not just that fine. There's the court costs, but more importantly, there's the insurance costs. It's just a problem. It can follow you around for years. It's a whole economic system based on squeezing money out of you, and you don't want to be a part of it. Exit that system with Off the Record. So go to offtherecord.com slash TST or download the Off the Record app and use code TST10. It is brilliant. All right, folks, on today's episode of the podcast, Rutledge Wood is in studio. What a treat. Rutledge is famously uh, one of the three hosts of the American Top Gear that ran for seven seasons on the History Channel. He is a NASCAR and IndyCar commentator, a Kentucky Derby commentator, an Olympics commentator, host of Floor is Lava, and the new host of a show all about Hot Wheels on NBC primetime, but more importantly, he's a good friend. He is one of, if not the nicest person in all of automotive media. He is just a, a, a glowing ball of positivity and fun. And we have a great two hours of radio with him. So happy to finally have him in our studio at Westside Collector Car Storage in Playa Vista. Rutledge Wood is on the Smoking Tire Podcast. We're on. Rutledge hey, Wood is in the house. Lachaim. Pretend Lachaim. Pretend like we didn't just talk for 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. So nice to have you here. Dude, thanks Finally. for having me. Can I, can we start, can I just take the mic for a minute? Take. It's so cool to be here, dude, to see what you have built and made. The first day we met, do you remember when we met? At Top Gear. At the at, studio. At Top Gear at El Toro. Season one. Yeah. Um, it was... It, it was shaky in places um, for a few seconds. Yeah, but it was all right. It was great. You yeah. led with honesty. You basically <laughs> were like, hey, bro, you got my job. I wanted that job. And you were very clear about that. And then you kind of, <laughs> <laughs> then you quickly turn and you're like, but but I like you. I think you're cool. Well, and once I got to know you, I knew that you 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 should have got the job. I can't do what you do. You like people in a way I don't. 
<laughs> and that's why you're so successful. You're literally the nicest person in cars. Well, you are the sweet. nicest person in the car industry. But I want you to know, from that moment forward, <laughs> you have been such a a supporter and an ally of mine. Uh, and, and in True. tons of ways where you didn't have to. And, dude, I just, I've appreciated that so much. But to also to see, like, I was pumped getting to meet Zach and, like, dude, what y'all have created, I don't know whether you're able to to be in touch in the way to see how you are inspiring us 20 years ago. Like, it's it's real time happening. What the high water mark that you've made, dude, is so so cool. I don't know. You were on Top Gear. I'm Dude, that was sure, really fun. Pretty like, sure we were chasing that. But also, that's it still doesn't seem real, and it's wildly mm. unattainable for most human beings. Like, I still yeah. don't know how I got it. Yeah, I don't. I, well, now that I know you, I do know how you got well, it. Well, you're sweet. Thank you. You have a mass appeal that I cannot have. Banana peel. Banana <laughs> <laughs> but no, dude, no. I, I, I love talking to, when I go to different events and I see kids, and I say kids like anyone from like 12 and up, oh, I, I label as kids. So if you're 30, I'm still going to call you a kid. Yeah, yeah. But the amount of people that know, like when you drove my R33 GTR, mm. first off, thanks for It was for a very doing nice that. car. So fun. It's a lovely car. Shout out to Sean Morris for yeah. finding that. Yeah, um, he finds some good ones. He, I just sold it to uh, my friend Charmont, who's got uh, Rev Matches, this cool app that they're doing. But like... Oh, Even I think I just amount. saw a car that had that sticker on oh, it. Yeah. We'll have to talk about whatever yeah. that is. It's, okay. a, it's a cool, it's it's kind of like build, it sort of builds like a story and who the car is and how mm. it kind of carries on. It's a, it's a cool thing. But like the amount of people that talk to me, they're like, dude, I saw Matt driving your car. Those this was so such a, neat. You know, that was the first R33 I ever drove. No way. It was such a nice car. It was, it was great. was fucking tight as a drum, that thing. Absolutely. And didn't it have some, like, real special wheels on it? It was something yes. about it they that was... They were Japanese-only yeah. uh, yeah. JDM spec wheel that oh, we yeah. then had rebuilt uh, three-piece, uh, rebarreled them, and made them up to an 18. Mm. But you got to drive that car. It's funny. Did I drive it before you, you did? You drove it before me. <laughs> and it's like, hey, can you drive my dream car and shake it down? It was good. It, it was needed great. nothing. Yeah. It was great. I I, it, had, it had a totally clean bill of health. Yeah. But you do not have it anymore. No, I just sold it. Uh, I replaced it with a Autec 260 RS oh. Stagia wagon. See, that's the move. That's a good that's time. The, when, like, that's like for people who know. Right. Like... That might be the nerdiest car on the planet. It really might be. Yeah. <laughs> it really might. It is so deeply. Seventeen hundred and thirty-four <laughs> of them were made. It and is I so up on deeply Instagram, I was like, nerdy. I hope he has a description because dude, I've never the seen amount one. of people that I fought over the past two weeks when I put that car up. Okay, mm-hmm. here's the thing. It looks rad with an R34 front end. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna do that. Of course, as you should. Number one, because it's my car. Number two, no one else is paying for it. So <laughs> I'm gonna revert back to number one. Yeah. yeah. The amount of haters that came out out of the woodwork when I said I'm going to sell the R33 because I'm getting a GR Corolla. Now, oh. did I know what I was doing? Absolutely. Poke the barrel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the Gotta amount- Gotta wind them up. Yeah. But the amount of like, I'm going to guess 16 to 25 year olds who A, don't have anything cool. B, don't, definitely don't have a GTR. Yeah. And I've probably never driven one. The amount of those kids that came after me to say I was getting a GR Corolla, I just want to be like, number one, it'll leave my R33 in the dust. I mean, objectively, it probably will, yes. but I don't think it's the same kind of vibe. But but go it's on. Not, but look yeah, yeah. it looks with it's an R34 front. It's not the same front. sort of vibe. Oh, no, vibe. the wagon, oh. I'm, I am pro. Dude, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, to trade an R33 for an Autec Wag Stagia yeah. is, a, is an upward It'll be great. Upward it's move. gone in 60 seconds. You're a connoisseur. <laughs> the R34 front end on it is it spectacular. It feels to me just like, because again, R33 driveline and everything underneath yeah. here, it feels just like that car. It's the now, same shit. I'll tell you, it is not as tight as that GT. It doesn't feel like Sean picked it out for me, and I know that every time I talk. And then Sean's such a good friend, I had to call him and be like, hey, man, what is this? Oh, no. And I was like, I know I didn't get it from you. I got it from Northeast Auto. In, uh, That's his favorite New thing, Hampshire. to answer, know, quest- answer good, questions about other people's cars. Do. He's like, hey, you need to swap that with here because yeah. this will give you different reading, whatever. I was like, you're the best. Is it a little scruffy? In places, it's not bad. Okay. It's, it's, um, it's got about... 
I don't know, 90,000 miles on it. Okay. Um, That's higher than the, the R33 yeah, yeah, for my, sure. Yeah, it had like 52,000 kilometers. Yeah. Or something. It was a That's baby. pretty low. This is yeah. 113, 112, well, something like that. You know, but still, stage you a wagon, fuck yeah, yeah all day. It'll be, it'll be awesome. Yeah. I, I am still more pumped, of course, about the GR Corolla Circuit Edition. It just got to the port, I think, last week. Oh, cool. So it's coming to Texas. You've I'm gonna driven go one, I imagine, yes. right? Such yeah, a fun they're car. a riot. Yeah. They're a great time. All and day. the circuit is the sweet spot. Absolutely. I got yeah. white with a black carbon roof. Cool. Uh, nice. Marty at TRD sent me. They had one set of stock wheels that came off of like a different project. Uh huh. I was like, can I please have those? I'm going to powder coat them bronze. Yeah, white bronze. Mm. Yes. Uh, but then the uh, Vivid guys in Arizona mm -hmm. have some really cool stuff, wheels and a bunch of other stuff. So I may, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I may have to have a little time where I swap some stuff out, have a little fun with it. But that to me is such a I like you can't stop, won't stop, yeah. always on yeah. the fun, always, always on the move, your always cars on the move. Stock ever, it seems like everything you have is yeah goes from yeah. mildly modified that. to extremely. I've never thought about that, but like I just want to make them my own, even if yeah. it's a little bit. Sure, like, I still want to change something. I understand completely, but I don't even think of it as doing it. <laughs> I just think of like no, it's mine. I'm going to just change some stuff. It's just a just, given. Yeah, you just move forward. Like yeah. Even my minivan, my Sienna, it's rimmed up. I changed the gold trim. I mean, the chrome trim to gold. And Have like, you talked to Sung Kang about minivans? You know I did. He, so he was on. He was on the new show. This motherfucker is like so obsessed with he his Sienna. And I'm like, dude, I'm finally, <laughs> finally, someone championing this amazing car. Mm -hmm. uh, mine, I put a uh, 20 inch bronze wheels on it. I changed the trim over, tend the windows, and it's dude. It feels like a Lexus inside there. Yeah, yeah. Gets great mileage. I got three kids. There's room. For everybody, great. yeah. It's, a, I, it's and it's my fourth minivan. Yeah, it's my are they all Sienna? Third, all Siennas? Three Siennas. We had an Odyssey in 08. 08 Odyssey was so good. Great time that Odyssey was generation car. was spectacular. Oh, yeah. I had an 09. Did it's you? Fucking how great. did you have one? I, when I, I had a Ford Raptor for a while that I wanted to use as a yeah, camera vehicle, and then I realized what a bad choice it was <laughs> for <laughs> a myriad of reasons. For yeah. so many reasons. The biggest of all is you'd park and go to lunch somewhere, and you'd have to load all the Pelican cases oh, yeah, into yeah, the yeah. cab. It was insane. Yeah, that's too much. And I was like, this is just so dumb. And I realized that one, like I had it for three years, and I, uh, I realized, yo, I could sell this thing for like, five grand less than I paid for it right. with 50,000 miles on it. And so I did. And I was like, oh, easy money. And yeah. so I bought a Volt and, a, and an Odyssey. I forgot about that time. And it was great. And the Odyssey did everything the Raptor did that I wanted the Raptor to do, but better. Sure. Everything. Absolutely. <laughs> so I mean, great. you open those sliding doors one time, and you're like, well, this mm -hmm. is living. It was so Dude, comfy. Dude, my Sienna, if you have the keys in your pocket and you just wave your foot under the door, oh, side doors are open, cool the back door, it's, yeah. it's so awesome. I just love having that minivan versus FCV talk with people because it's so simple to me it really boils down to do you actually care what your neighbor thinks about what you drive because yeah. if you don't it's a non-starter every little suv if you have kids they're not for you no yeah if you have two kids get a minivan and never look back Dude, you unless people you I go know? camping or do any light off-roading frequently right because that's the only advantage is the ground clearance it, otherwise it, you right. know i drove a previa off-road 1100 miles <laughs> yeah <laughs> but we hit the bottom need, a lot I, you do not need a suv to go off-road right <laughs> where did your train <laughs> plug go <laughs> somewhere that one somewhere in utah mm -hmm. found another it one went, we, it ran away well, well, but, i loved my previa <laughs> they're just there they really are it's so funny that there are those stigmas about things like that because every time I have that conversation like my friend's wife was like I just I don't want to be I don't want to be a minivan mom and I was like I don't know why you care yeah and she was like well but no like for me and I was like why <laughs> do you care yeah because you're gonna buy some little like Kia that looks cool today but you can't put the stroller in the back is it just that the when we were kids the image of someone driving something practical was offensive. The same way there's a generation that won't drive wagons, but they'll right. drive crossovers, which is a lifted wagon. But we look at, like, our parents, so the boring parents might have had minivans. We didn't think they were cool ever. And now That's we just carry that with point. us. Maybe. It's just really weird because my mom had minivans, and I think I think because my my mom's minivan was a got hand me down to me for a period mm, and I did the same. mattress in the back. Oh. You know, it was a Nautica Villager by the way. Oh wow. Nautica. You did not see a lot of those. Nautica. <laughs> 
Oh, Straight I remember. Up. Oh, that yeah. That was blue with like the white and the yellow. Like a capsized sailboat, yep. my friend. <laughs> That's a perfect way to describe. Found the man in the boat many a time. You would get it either way. You get you would get uh, kids don't even know. You get it in panda or reverse panda, right? right? Blue white or white blue. The white blue was really weird. Oh yeah. The white blue looked. Was yours blue white? Mine was blue and white on the bottom with white wheels. Yeah, fuck. But like, it. even yeah. it was so cool. Bro, remember the nineties when these clean. crossover fashion products. You know, Eddie Bauer really started it, but they were such a one. No, they didn't pony. start it, dude. You don't think Cartier oh, Lincoln? I'm, so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of we like, had the, of the, the 90s, Chrysler right. Cordoba Absolutely. shit with the Corinthian leather. Look at it this. goes back. Look at this it Corinthian back, leather. The, uh, I mean, the, some of them. There was like a. Um, was it the Cordoba? I'm trying to think of what the really first one I remember seeing. I mean, it's the I was Cartier. Born in 80. There was a Cartier, 1979 Continental Mark oh, yeah. V Cartier. Wow. That's big a fucking a, Rutledge big car big right, a there. House right yeah. there. We built. Uh, it's on got a Hot helipad wheels. on the hood. Actually, that's just the hood. Dude, it's a, so the T Bird was almost identical to that, right? Uh-huh. In that same era, and we had a 78 T Bird on Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge, and you'll see it um, on the show. I hope you guys will watch. But they they wanted to cut the top off and turn it into a Roadster. And it's the one time that I was like, hey, you know, it does have that kind of funky, like, T-bar yeah. with the little opera windows. Just there leave was, that shit. I was like, just think about leaving that. And they were like. It's like a little wing with a window. Why would you do that? I was like, it'll look like a handle, but it's like, it's pretty cool. There was some random commercial once, and I don't know if it was like Old Navy. It could have been Mountain Dew. But it was like, we got Grandma's car, and it was a T-bird like that. And they cut the roof off. And the back and left that bar. And I was like, dude, I never thought you could look at those it cars. It would look and think like they were a cool. uh, Maybach Langele, where yes. the roof goes back, but the sides are still there. Absolutely. Yeah, Awkward yeah. as all hell. <laughs> kind yeah. of a speedster, kind of not. Yeah. yeah. And it's too slow and fat to be a speedster, right. but still, it had something there. It reminds me of, I think the Ford version of that was the LTD. Was that the Uncle Buck car? Yes. I think it was oh, the Uncle Buck. I think that was Big full as Uncle a Buck. House. Yeah. Um, With fuck. a big block, it had to have like a 140 horsepower, 800 pounds of torque. Oh no, what was that? What is that one? A Mercury Marquis Brom. Wow. So it was the Mercury version of that same car. Yeah, because there must Uncle have Buck fans. there must have that's been a bad. Ford Mercury and Lincoln version of exactly the same car. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 100. Yeah, that's the T Bird underneath. That's there. funny. I don't think I ever knew that was a Mercury. Fucking iconic Crazy movie car, though. If Mercury. you ask me, absolutely. What a um, guy's clean version. Let's talk about the Hot Wheels show. It's it was cool so as shit. Fun. Here's what so, I'll what's tell you. the premise of the show? Someone is it like said, a monster garage, but you're building cars yeah, into? Yeah, I think that's Hot a better Wheels? way to put it. Because someone said, "Oh, is it like pimp my ride?" I was like, "No, respectfully, they had a great time. It's not that." So, here's what we do: we take two people and get a car from their past that has some sort of meaning to them, right? It could have been a station wagon that you grew up in, maybe mom's old villager. Uh, yeah, and we, next season, we're doing yeah. a villager. Oh my God, that would be amazing. <laughs> you get a season two, there must be so a villager. <laughs> the, the idea is that we reunite them with this car in the exact place that they remember, meaning like it looks just like it. Okay. So they put a ton of effort into that, and you see this wildly emotional moment on some of these that you don't expect, right? One guy it was a 69 Are they surprised? Dodge Charger. Yes. Okay. They know it's coming, but they haven't. most of these people haven't seen these things in so long mm-hmm. that it takes them back to this other place immediately. So those two people get reunited with this thing. Then we line them up with this incredible team of builders. We call them the carpool, right? The carpoolers are welders, fabricators, mechanics, artists, just incredible mix. And they've got truly seven days to transform these cars. And they're doing it. 30 feet away from each other. So the two garages look into each other. Okay. Ooh. No one's ever done anything they like this. See. They yes. can see. Okay. So you can see in real time the progress the other group has made. Wow. Oh, pressure. Okay. Which is wow. legit pressure. Yeah. Mercedes and Red Bull sharing an office space. Yeah. So yeah. it also means if someone's fighting or, or talking trash about whatever this, they can't make it happen, the other team's like, oh, boy. Let's start, figure out how to turn mm-hmm. those screws That's a little bit. So it's, it's really neat in what happens. Every show, halfway through the show, this gigantic thing that I'm standing in front of is called the Inspirationator 5000. It will spit out an iconic <laughs> Hot Wheels. Okay. And each team has to incorporate one design element from that mm. car. Because you think about the, especially the Hot Wheels cars that they designed that weren't a car that existed in reality. Yeah. 
The, Some of the those, cartoonish proportions yeah. and stuff. Skull and crossbones. Yeah. I mean, um, cloak and dagger. There's so many crazy ones that exist. And so imagine if you're trying to build this one like classic hot rod and they hand you something that looks like an open wheel indie car, like bad to the blade. You'd be like, what, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you got to figure it out. So um, then the very last day, we take the super fans out. They finish the cars, paint, wrap, and that kind of final stage. So there's usually something cool that they the teams will do like a little Easter egg for the super fan, and then we reveal them. Yo, dog! I heard you like popcorn. Yo, so we put some popcorn in your popcorn. <laughs> I made that joke. If it makes the show, I'll be impressed. There's I corn did, kernels in your tires. I did one a show, probably just in case. Heard you like waterfalls, and then I would just trail off. But so if I don't, unless the editors were around, they wouldn't get it. But y'all would. So yeah, and then we How reveal the, the editor. Twenty four. Yes, yes, dude. we got them. <laughs> And whoever wins wins twenty five grand, and then their car moves on to the finale. So there's cool. eight regular shows. So sixteen people did this crazy competition. Whoa! And then we put the winning eight cars all together. We go around them. Uh, it's me and Hurt. They used to be at Hoonigan. Love Hurt, Hurt. Eugene Jr. What a great guy. He was did a great show. radio with us. Yeah, he's such a good dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. And he and I have been friends for like fifteen years. True story. When they called me to tell me who I was doing the show with. I called her on FaceTime. I immediately started crying because That's amazing. this is a you, dude. Did you that, not know? No. Like oh, they were surprised. I, They're like, oh, by the way. Yeah, like, I was just so shit. happy because, like, this is my bro. Like, when he started Beard Life back in the day and he was in Njuku, Greg Bussell, that's at CoreWorks, like, connected us. We became friends. And I've watched him rise in this amazing way. Yeah. And. I was just so happy because whether he knew it in that moment or not, like a primetime show in the in the U.S. on the biggest network that's ever been, like to be on NBC for this first, I was like, dude, this is, you the made rules. it. Like this is he's huge. There. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Wow. And he started laughing. He's like, you really, you're really emotional. I was like, I don't mean to be, but this is huge, dude. We're going to go do this adventure together. Do you think, is that because you, you've kind of gotten to this mountaintop before and you know the effect it can have and like what it means for your career or a career. And so you kind of, you're almost from the future and you're like, this is great. Maybe. You have no idea. Well, he also heard also didn't start as like a broadcaster. Mm-hmm. He was right. never like, I'm going to be a TV host. Right. He was like, I'm going to do grimy shit in my beater car. Absolutely. And th- that, when that turns into primetime television hosting, yeah. it's like, holy shit, what the, where are we? Well, and I've never hosted, I mean, you think of all the fun stuff I've done. I've never hosted a primetime show. And that's still mm-hmm. like, that's such a big thing thing i guess know. was top gear not considered prime time it's cable it? right it was, cable. Yeah. It was, it was hosting nascar not considered prime time yes and no i mean i think we can make arguments for okay. in both of those well not where they're like that uh, <laughs> not where you get a hero shot yeah and they actually used my body this time not like <laughs> we were laughing the day you were at sema and they were releasing hot uh top gear i was like that's not my body. <laughs> really? Yeah, on the poster. Put, they and put like, his oh, face on a body double. Yeah. And they were like, because the dude had what I would call banana hands. Like, his fingers look <laughs> twice as long as normal fingers. And I was like, I've never worn a cardigan in my life. But I was like, Did, was I too big? Like, what happened? They were like, That's no, so no it's not you. It's just your body. All the pictures you were facing this one way. We needed your legs to be facing the other way. And I was like, nobody was going to tell me. <laughs> They're like, I don't. I think we thought you would notice. I was like, That's fucking oh, okay. Yeah. So wow. yeah, I, I never. <laughs> no idea they could do that. Or oh, would they, you do it? they can and they do. Yeah. So you know, to be there with Hurt and Dalal and to see <laughs> the so emotion fun. that people have, because so many people have had this sort of dream of like, man, if I could rebuild this, if I could build this into what I always saw it as. Because as kids, you know, whatever car your parents have, you think is the coolest car in the world. Sure. And then you grow up. Unless and like, they have it was a Lexus a LS400 and it actually was the coolest car in Absolutely. the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Where's the million miler? Uh, Freddie uh, Tavarish oh, has right. it. Yeah, he still has it. Such a great car. Yeah. So the, the, <laughs> the wild thing is there are these emotional spots in this show. And yes, it's a car show. It's really just a show about people. Yeah. And I think for me, it was so cool because Hot Wheels have been this through line in my whole life. That's my earliest memory of playing with toys was playing with Hot Wheels. Mm-hmm. And I said, like, one day I'm going to have a garage like this. I'm going to have 
I, I mean, we're looking at Where right? are we at, bro? I'm going to have a different car that I could drive every single day of the week. And it was the first time that I started customizing stuff. You know, you'd wreck them enough. You could flake the paint. Yeah. I'd get my mom's paint pens, and I'd make them all chrome or gold. I used to pop or... the wheels off them and oh, swap the swap the wheels. Absolutely. Yeah, like that's, yeah, yeah. That was our first steps into doing right. that. Yeah. But because I also have that dream of whoever wins of those three that get picked for the finale, and pick a, they build a totally different car. Whoever wins that, they win fifty grand, and that design gets turned into a Hot real life. Do they get to keep their cars that are built for them, or no? They don't. They don't. They don't. Oh, okay. So these people get emotionally invested in the car, and then you take it away. Yeah, it's yeah. Cold. It's a classic, classic <laughs> move. And then they were like, "Do you want to buy any?" And I was like, "I'm gonna say no <laughs> wow. for once in my life." Yeah. I've been, you know, I bought so how many, many cars Top from Gear Top cars Gear? did you buy? Like three? Uh, probably seven. <laughs> <laughs> They were all total piles. Yeah. Just awful. Yeah, well, they're shitty TV had cars. They were supposed to be shitty. The one coolest one, legitimately, was the jacked up school bus. Yeah. And Jeremy McGrath has it. And so it makes me, I had it. Um, here's one thing that was really fun for me. I had this bus. I knew he was looking for one. And I, I told him, here's the number for it. And he's like, nah, I'll find one out here. I'll build it. And I was like, okay. And I said, wait a second. What if we trade? Folks, got to take a quick break for NASCAR. Their 75th anniversary season is really starting to heat up. We've already seen tempers flare on a couple of occasions with Bowman and Suarez exchanging words at Coda, and most recently, Ross Chastain introducing Noah Gragson to his right hand at Kansas. Emotions are high, and the field is certainly beginning to feel the pressure of locking in their playoff spot before it's too late. Now, this week, Weekend, the NASCAR Cup Series is headed to Charlotte Motor Speedway for one of their biggest events of the year, the Coca-Cola 600. Wrapping up the 2023 NASCAR Salutes window, this weekend is about so much more than just a race. The entire racing community rallies around this event to show respect and gratitude to the brave men and women who protect the United States. There's just a grandness to this race, unlike any other race on the schedule. If you don't have Memorial Day weekend plans yet, you've got to check out NASCAR. Invite the whole crew over and watch NASCAR honor those who have fought and continue to fight for our freedoms by tuning in to the Coca-Cola 600 on Sunday, May 28th at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific on Fox. And I said, wait a second, what if we trade? And he was like, what do you want? I was like, I want bikes. Yeah. I want two motorcycles, but I want them to have been yours. Like, I want you to have ridden them. And he was like... Okay. That's a good deal, I think. Absolutely. Because I'm Great like, he's, deal. he's probably provenance, for, yeah, bro. He's getting them for free. Yeah. So what does he care? Sure Throw him enough, on a trailer. We cut the we cut the snow plow off. A guy drives down from Massachusetts who said to his wife, I think I'm gonna get robbed because there's no <laughs> way someone would sell a snow plow in Georgia for this cheap. Like this doesn't make any sense. I didn't need it. <laughs> so we sold it there. for like a thousand dollars. Yeah, so whatever. He oh takes it back. God. We ship the car, he ships me the bikes. And I gave one uh, to my good friend Rob Thomas. I lost a kidney, but I got a real cheap it's snow plow. Great. You're gonna love it. Wait, Rob Thomas didn't mean- it sounds like Matchbox. No, uh, Rob Thomas of Rob Thomas RT Woodworking. Okay. Um, his son Owen is our godson <laughs> and uh, has just always been a great friend. Rob Ride, so I gave him one. Uh, and it was just such a fun, like, surprise him for Christmas. I loaded up the other one, and my friend Randy Allgood that builds all my cars at the Kenwood Rod Shop, Randy's son Steve had made a dirt bike at their house for their son, and he rides. And the best part is we... Had it loaded. This is when I had that brown Tundra. It was a 2014 1794. We pull up, and he's like, oh, bro, you got a bike. We're going to ride together. This is awesome. And I was like, no, no, you got a bike. And he's like, no, but you got a bike. And I was like, Merry Christmas. You gave it to him? He turns and walks off. Doesn't understand. He just walks off. And he comes back, and he's holding a copy of Racer X magazine. And he's like, why is the, why is the motorcycle that's on this cover in your truck in my driveway? What? And I was like, Merry Christmas. Wow. Did you know that that was the bike that I had he had? I had no idea. And sure enough, like, it was the bike. It was the, the actual seat, everything. bike. So when, when I told Jeremy, like, yeah, I really want something that was yours, he's like, okay, bro, I got you. And I've never seen a grown man tear up that quickly. Like, it was immediate. And then 
I don't know, 15 seconds later, it's off the truck, wheeling up his driveway. <laughs> it was such that's, a, that's it awesome. was a change of emotion. Oh, that's great. Of like, oh, this is great. And I so, mean, that's for you to trade a school bus for two motorcycles only to immediately give both away. Well, you know, who else would do that? Well, we don't get chances to do stuff like this. Like, I was like, dude, I could be painting houses tomorrow. Well, at least yeah. I did something cool along the way. And those guys love them. Steve tried to see if his wife would let him put it above the mantle. And she <laughs> said, yes, but you have to take all the deer heads down. And he was like, it's cool. It'll go in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rob's got it chained in the garage. Like he put these. Now crazy you, let, you listen bolts. here. Them deer heads is for Can life. You hang the bike from listen the deer the antlers. Yeah, that's fun. a great question. I feel like he should have looked into it. But those are those cool moments where you're like, dude, we get to do some fun stuff along the way. That's what this whole show felt like. We were giving <laughs> other people this chance to relive this thing because, like, one guy, Jim, he's from New Jersey. He bought a '69 Dodge Charger that was in this guy's backyard, and he's he and his dad would walk from the factory home and they would see this car it was um, like kind of matte black had a for sale sign in the window in the backyard right they go knock on the door and it was like 700 bucks and so every week they were going by paying a little more on the car and then oh, layaway one, yeah like old school jersey layaway and then one day he gets it um and his dad's like yeah we're all paid up we can take it home they go home and it starts this new space in their relationship where they got to work on this car together he paints it yellow I'm sure raced it all over town, got a little cocky one day, tried to race someone in reverse. <laughs> it didn't go well. And that was, Never the does. The, that was the end of the Charger. And to see, and he, this guy's awesome. He rides Harleys. He's like a van upfitter in New Jersey. So he builds, whether it's like a, a lot of the municipal setups that they have, this guy can do anything, right? The to see his Put special reaction. secret compartments in the vans, you know, <laughs> exactly. if you need like hey. a, if you need a box in a box, I ooh, got you, got you. Hey, Stu Gatz. So it's um, <laughs> he to see his reaction when he saw the car originally yeah. roughed up for sale sign in the window. Like so just do you away. have photo references? Sometimes we do, yeah, and we'll try to do it as close to that as we can. But at one point during the reveal, when this car's built and and he did it exactly the way he wanted to. Crazy. It's got a 426 Hemi stuffed in the back. Oh, cool. He wanted the car to do wheelies. Whoa. I look to my right, and here's Terry Crews, who's guest starring as this judge. That's great. And I'm like... Great. Someone who's really uh, directable. <laughs> Dude, he's amazing. Here's Terry, and I realize Terry's crying, and I look over, and I realize Jim's crying, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm crying. We're looking at a 69 Charger right now, but what happens is, like, the reason you're here is because you were around cool cars, and someone, probably one of your parents, made you love them in this way that felt like this is my path, right? Yeah, yeah. Was that dad for you? I mean, my dad, like, enabled me. He didn't, he's not that into cars, but he, when he saw that I was, he let me you know, he Run let me with that. he let me sit on his lap and drive steer his car in parking lots. Absolutely. And he bought me a go kart when I was nine, and he let me he bought me car magazines and all that kind of shit. So yeah. he enabled me, although he was never that into it. But he saw when yeah, yeah. you saw that nine yeah. eleven in the parking lot and saw this glimmer. He went, "Oh, this yeah, is special. this is the thing." Yeah, they would right? take me. What to the... was it? What was it for you? Um, really similar. My my parents weren't into cars, but I think I liked like my dad would let me shift and drive when I was five, and I was like, okay positive memories with the car yeah and then they also helped me kind of run with it and then when i was like 15 i joined the hot rod club no where we way. learned to wrench on stuff with people some people went to jail later and some people were <laughs> 75 years old but some of us were in high school and were like this is the place to be and then when i turned 16 they helped me buy like a kind of beat uh gto clone because it was like well is no this what way. you're into and you know you so had I, a Le Mans or what? I had a Le Mans. Oh, yeah, with, with like my a parents would not like let that. me buy a car from the '60s. I yeah. wanted. Oh, one, it was so but they dangerous. Were like, no. right. Two of the steering wheel spokes were broken, and there were three total. <laughs> it was like a Citroen. You only need For one. Really? You'll yeah. be yeah. fine. It's just that <laughs> you one weird one. one. Yeah. But like, you know, like cool you said, they saw the path, and I think they kind of supported it. What was yours? My dad grew up on Route 66 in New Mexico. On his parents' dealership, they had a. It was called Valley Motors. Um, and they had a step van that they delivered parts in, which is why I've been so into them, right? Um, they had a Napa Auto Parts, a 
John Deere tractor and then an international harvester, but they had different addresses for the same building because I don't think you were allowed to have them. At oh, the same franchises? Thing. Yeah. Oh, like that's it was, funny. So my dad had. There's a, a mailbox on each yes. side of the building. <laughs> there are three doors that open to the same room. I love that. <laughs> it's, like the, it's, like, it's like in the movie. Money goes in one door and out the other door. <laughs> it feels like, I think it's like in the, if y'all ever seen uh, Help by the Beatles, they're like, all right, see you later, good night. They're waving to each other and then they open their apartment doors and it's all just one big room. <laughs> it was like that. It's the same thing. So yeah, he was like flipping cars when he was 13. He'd uh, see him come in, he'd buy them and sell them. So that's how. Flipping kinda, them to himself. You hey, know? today. So that's how he got started. <laughs> wow. And then I just ran with it. And, yeah. and my love for them far surpassed. And his. what were the franchises? Deer, Har- John Deere, John Deere International Deere. Harvester, and then uh, Napa. But oh, like wow. My dad okay. had, there was a Scout 800, the smaller ones. They made one that was a four cylinder turbo. And my what? grandpa. They did? Yeah, which is crazy. Super rare. Never even heard of that. Yeah. It was one of the, and that's what, like, what a random thing. But they made one, and I think it had Literally a Surrey one. They top. made one. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a Scout 800. Oops, Get the um, fuck out of here. Turbo and, and so in the Harvester's franchise, he was selling the streetcars, not like tractors. I think he had both. Oh, okay, but it wasn't like a crazy polished thing. He's out in the middle yeah. of nowhere, right? Like I they're mean, they, they're they, in Moriarty outside of Albuquerque. Yeah, it looks um, like they look just like the other ones on the absolutely. outside, so you okay. can't really tell. But, but so my grandpa, who was a, who was a tough cat, the one like endearing sweet thing that I know for sure he did for my dad was my dad. Uh, Blows that scout up. It sends a rod through the block. And do that. my grandpa <laughs> took that rod and he put like a pocket watch in there. Oh, no way. Where the crank would have been and put That's like some real greatest the generation shit. Absolutely. <laughs> and he made this cool thing that my dad still has. And it's like the one, like, I think it was the best way that he could have been like, oh, you get me, very, I love you. Yeah, That's cool. Yeah. Thing. So That's pretty cool. Yeah. I thought it was really neat. You still got it? Uh huh. That's awesome. Absolutely. Like, what a cool little keepsake. Yeah. But I bet he made my dad pay for that block. Like, just want to be real clear. It was probably like, hey, this is nice. Now pay me. It's like in Ford versus Ferrari when he frames the wrench he hooked at him. You know? Probably never happened. My dad had a scout, and he let me take it off-roading at Hollister Hills once. It was like Mm. an off-road park. And he was like, you just have to be careful. And I was like, yeah, of course, of course. And the tack doesn't really work. And that engine revs to like 4,500. Uh-huh. And I came back, and the next day he's like... A lot of white smoke coming out of the back of this oh, like, no. head gasket. Oh, no. Because we're over revving it because we got stuck. Is that the 345, the V8? 100% 345, four what speed. What a dog. What a terrible engine. Oh, my gosh. I, I had a 73, it's, and it's it a, sucks. I, it was awful. It's it real crazy to me to people that are, that are people are enthusiasts of those. It's hard They're to. They're fucking awful. Yeah, pull, pull it out, the put engine, a 350 it, in, and just you'll be fine. My but, dad's a mechanic friend. I was, I was moving to Colorado, <laughs> and, and my parents like, what if you take the Scout there? And the, Jake pulls me aside, and he goes, if you bring the truck, we're going to take the engine out and put a Chevy engine in. Absolutely. He's like, I, he's like, I will not let you leave this state with it. <laughs> yeah, it won't run to get there. It was yeah. such a, I, had, I bought mine for 800 bucks, took it to my friend's muffler shop, and we cut some tubing so we could brace the body mounts <laughs> back up. Wow. And wedge it because the body was sitting sideways on the frame. Holy it would backfire like yep. you could not believe. There's, uh, there's two vehicles that John Ward of Icon will not touch. One is a Defender, and the other is a Scout. That's perfect. There isn't enough money in the world <laughs> that for him to fix one of those. Yeah. They are lost cousins, aren't they? <laughs> Holy shit. They really one are. Those America Defenders are one so state. funky. Oh, they're too. trash. I don't know why anyone likes those either. I know. One of the things I was so excited about the show, Joel McHale came on. Mm. I don't, have you ever met Joel? No. Huge so car I've heard guy. good things, really. Great dude. Huge car guy. Oh. And we start talking. I was like, "So you have anything fun?" He's like, "Yeah, I got. I mean, I got a couple things." And I was like, "All right, I know you got cool stuff. If you're if you're shaking it off, like, what do you what do you got?" He's like, "Well, um, I got a Land Cruiser, Toyota Land Cruiser, FJ sixty two. I was like, "Ooh, oh, okay. Uh, you got anything done to it?" He's like, "Yeah, I got a couple things. You know, sixty uh, two is it the pickup truck? No, sixty two is a sixty with the rectangular headlights. Oh, okay. And they um, had seat belts that were." higher in the back is basically oh, it, right? like stadium seating? Yeah. They just had, like, instead of just Oh, lap those. Belts. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it looks yeah, just like, like a 60, okay, just slight yeah. improvements. Okay. <clears throat> and I just sold mine. Well, if you look up the Corsetti Cruisers, he started telling me, he's like, yeah, I got it built by these guys, Corsetti. I was like, Corsetti? 
He's like, yeah, yeah, you know. I was like, I've been following them for years. He's like, yeah, they did, they did mine. It's got an LS3 in there, whatever. It's like, oh, are what they color like the, is su- yours? the super specialty? Yeah, they, Ooh, that's a lovely here. looking truck. It's I got think, an LS motor in I it. I think that's his. Yeah. Ooh, that's Ooh, real nice. Ooh, that's very nice. And I was nice. like, does it have the stripe kit? And he's like, yeah. I was like, dude, I know your car. Oh, that's cool. But he's also got an it icon. It looks great. He's got an icon Land Cruiser oh, that cool. is Sick. a troop carrier, which I think is a 45, a yeah. 245. Uh, long bench seats back there. But he also just bought like a 50. I drove one of those 45s. They drive so good. Yeah, that's what he We said. just drove the Bro- Icon Bronco last oh, week. It was great. amazing. Worth Everything's it. amazing, of course. Yeah. Dude, it's so nice. It's so nice. Yeah. And we've got one here at West Side that you probably saw downstairs. That one downstairs, yeah. Yeah. Costs three quarters of what it would have cost to buy Icon, an Icon car. No way. And it's Now, is that one built good. by like a by Land some, Cruiser By just company? some local okay. guy. Yeah. And it's just not anywhere near the quality. I don't know if people understand how much thought and engineering goes into the Icon stuff. Because especially like if you see like the Derelict or any of those early ones, you're kind of like, why would you pay so much for this? But then anyone that knew was like, dude, <laughs> yeah. that thing's going to be yeah. worth every penny. Yeah. But when you talk to John and he starts talking about how they laser scan everything and like 3D model stuff before they reassemble it. because. Because his Bronco can look similar to the Bronco, you know, downstairs or someone else. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Lifted Bronco, and then you learn every piece was analyzed and scanned with a computer, and then like engineered every plastic it was piece built. is remade, but in metal, yeah. like just. Oh, yeah. And then their steering box that they use makes the steering like great, mm-hmm. like just all the little bit that this other one that we have here, the guy like great guy who owns it means really well. Wanted this awesome Bronco. Coyote motor, modern sure. gearbox, all the things that you th- the the parts are checked right. off, but this it's always broken. Mm. It drives like shit. Sure, it doesn't steer for anything, and it was almost as expensive as just buying the Icon. And the guy could have had twenty thousand miles on the Icon. Right, right and that's a tough. Y'all know too. It's it's hard when you're looking at any vehicle as a partial investment or whatever. Like I, I just built this seventy two K five Blazer. With Summit and Holly, those things are rough when they're in fact when they're stock. They do not drive well. It is. It's different. <laughs> it is. It's like riding a pogo stick from yeah, the seventies. Yeah. But oh, is this I it? think yeah, that's it. Oh, and good patina though. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, left it like that. Oh, the patina. interior, the seats, yes. the TMI seats and it's like King Ranch leather with a tartan. Yeah, dude. It's Hell a yeah! Tail What's cool? TMI. I called them and just walked through everything I wanted. And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, we'll spec it out. Great, here you go. Take some." That one took probably two months, two and a half months. That's awesome! Wow, uh, that tartan is fantastic. But I wanted this, like, I wanted this to be that man. I didn't, I didn't have any thoughts that it will drive like a modern SUV. Like I knew it's going to ride like that. Yeah. But we did a big bear bear brake kit on there. Curry did the rear end for me. Called Casey and we got a great. It's a, a nine inch underneath there. Uh, Richard Wade just came and did the exhaust, of course yes. Magnaflow. Like it sounds great. The weirdest part. Here's what I've never had this happen before. Someone offered me money for it before it was finished. Oh, and I was like almost offended in a way <laughs> because I thought like number one, that's a lot of money, and I've got kids, and I'll sell everything. Like all yeah. my stuff's always for sale. I'm not. I'm no dummy. But number two, I was like, you haven't even driven it. And that kind of hurts my feelings. It makes me feel like you got more money than That's, love for this Well, thing. and also mm. we're so used to, like, with bring a trailer and all these. You were, we're so used to just shopping online. Do you think online. it's a, all a sham, bring a trailer? Can no. We just talk, can I feel a can sham? I just you, when I say sham, I can't tell if it's money laundering and there are only 12 people moving the cars back and forth. I do wonder about that sometimes. But sometimes I'm like, there is no way that this particular thing sold for that money, and then it'll pop back up two years later. And I'm like, what just happened? Dude. <laughs> I don't well, understand. I, the people that I told you about, some of whom we've got here, they yeah. buy. They, some people have so much money. And that hunt and that yeah. act, the qu- acquiring shit. They just get the hype, right? They just Think they, of like, if you've ever been excited to find a vintage door handle for a car or something small sure. where you're like, I finally found <clears throat> the steering wheel. And you think, I'll pay whatever that number is because I've got to yeah. have it. There are people that just have more zeros, so to them, the car is the steering but wheel. And there's definitely, I mean, there's definitely like, like people who will have their buddy bid up a car. Yeah, it has to be. That's, I mean, yeah, and there's no happen. way to, to, to right. prevent that from happening, but... 
like a lot of the ones where um where I my first instinct is like pff, money laundering. I actually think it might be a situation where it's not money laundering, it's market cornering. Oh. Like like they might have three others just yeah. like that. Oh, I didn't and I saw this happen in that. person. When I in twenty fifteen, me and my old man went to Pebble Beach and uh, as a vacation to the sure. auctions. <clears throat> and I got a bidder's pass at Gooding. And and the very first lot on the very first day was a Hakoska. Ooh. And it was bef- right before they were about to be, they were still expensive, but sure. it was right before it was about to be uh, unobtainium kind of thing. Right. The estimate was like 120 grand. It was a stretch, but I could afford it if I wanted it. So I'm like, I'm going to bid on this fucking car. And I might get it, might not, but I'm not, I want to be in the game. Right. I put in the first bid, someone else bid, I bid again, and then. <laughs> And it was gone. And it was gone. In thirty seconds, it was gone. The car went for like two forty something plus wow. plus premium. And I found out later that the guy who bought it overpaid because this was the first public Pebble Beach auction sale of one of these cars, and he owned a bunch of them. No kidding. And it just established a fifty percent higher value for his other cars. That's brilliant. Yeah, smart. Really smart. Couldn't even be mad at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm sitting here going like, man, that's bro. And then it, it's funny I say that. I know, I know, BAT's fine. Cars and bids feels like the girl next door, and I think BAT feels like a, a high priced lady that you met at a bar, and there's got to be money exchange. Is that fair to say? Like it just, and maybe it's because I love Doug, but like that just feels they feel I mean, very different to me. They are. Well, I think I think to BAT's credit, <clears throat> they've been around for what ten years now. Yeah, at least like. They're I don't not, feel like they're not they, fans of mine. I've tried to sell two things, mm. I think, and each time they're like, that's worth $7,500. And I was like, go <laughs> to health. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. They, are, they are up market from cars and bids in some ways, I yeah. would say, but I don't think they, they do. Have I've bid on a bunch of stuff. My I've never M3 is going on. on cars and bids. Yeah, that thing's. BAT doesn't need me. They're, right. you know, I right. love Randy. I think Randy Nonnenberg is awesome. Sure. Everyone I've met who works there has been great. Yeah. We sell customer cars through it. I've had good experiences. But, like, right now I'm Team Doug. Yeah. It's hard not to, yeah. right? There's, like, there's whole businesses based around selling cars on BAT. Yeah. Like, there's a guy, when Randy was on here, he talked about a guy who had, like, 500 listings. Like hundreds of cars. Like his whole model is selling cars on Bring a Trailer. Oh, he is a he's a car dealer. What's but, so cool, and I want to so. give all both of them props. You know, when eBay first started doing that, and so many of us were on that first wave. Like, mm-hmm. oh, this is I can get a car from another place. You know, they saw how do we really do this in a great way? I mean, it's so much like being here, dude. Like what you've done here is so out of the park. I Thank I you. had bounced this idea around of doing a similar service in Georgia where I was and it wouldn't it, there's no way you could do this without the love and the passion that you have but to me that what you built here at Westside that's kind of what I think BAT and Cars and Bids did they took the idea and this notion that someone from somewhere else could buy your car and then they made it yeah. just to the nth degree well and mm-hmm. the and that the requirements to list there whether it's the the 100 <laughs> photos and the service records right. and all that has th- th- that has become the norm now as right. opposed to like five pictures on Craigslist you know uh, you're you're in a better place as a buyer yeah. but you can st- you know you s- it's what's still amazing is that people don't spend the extra effort to do the pre-purchase inspection or to go right. test drive the cars themselves you have to i sold a i've sold $200,000 cars for my clients out of this shop on bring a trailer and zero people have come to look at them in person that's it's wild. crazy. That's it's crazy. That's one of those things where I'm like, that's money is different to mm-hmm. people yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah, I bought one car sight unseen, and it was the um, the only one I ever did. And it wasn't. It was from a buddy. It just had way more rust than I thought. <laughs> and I was like, this is a really good. I need to remember this the it's next a good time. Lesson. Yeah. yeah, I shouldn't do this. And yeah, a friend yeah. of ours that runs a shop has said that he's worked on a lot of cars that were bought at BAT after they were delivered because there were problems that were not discovered because <clears throat> no one test drove it. And sure. it's not that BAT is misrepresenting. Like, no, it's, it's not, not their fault. I just yeah. want to make it's that, not that clear. Yeah, it's not, it was it's, like it's, the buyer it's, didn't do as much diligence as they should have, yeah. and now there's issues. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, it's happened in the housing market for the record, too. People yeah. will go buy stuff and they'll be like, oh, no inspection. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> no way, dude. bro, on this planet Earth, that is the worst idea you could have. When there was the app, was it Open Door? They were selling houses you could buy like with your phone. Yeah. And if you want, like, the, the most amazing TikToks are building inspectors that go find houses that were newly purchased and they're like, Sure, this drawer doesn't need to open. It just opens into a fucking wall. Right. Like, crazy stuff. I mean, you think about people in Florida that one day came home from work and their house was in the sinkhole. Like, yeah. they did inspections. Dude, the, the, yeah. my, yeah. Like, that they wasn't tried. supposed to happen. They were doing the right thing. So all these people that are doing stuff now. My building oh. in Gardena, which is now done and has been gone through in every way something can be gone sure. through and improved. The amount of lipstick that was put on this pig to oh, sell I it. Bet. The amount of paint that was used specifically to cover shit. Yeah. You know, the amount of like effort that people went into to mask the fact that the foundation of the building was completely fucked. Right. Like it was it was pretty short. Like I'm not even mad. I'm actually kind of impressed. Kind of impressed. <laughs> like, <laughs> did y'all bondo concrete and yeah. then put seven layers of paint on it so I wouldn't notice? They invented yeah. a new material. That's amazing. Too yeah. Shame. And NASA. like it photograph if I saw if I showed you a picture of like the listing, right. it looked nice. And it turns out, like, all of the nice right, was, was covering, not. like, a complete disaster. All your pictures when it was in process, I was like, man, this thing needs a lot of work. I yeah. Did you really we, expect you to get a spot had like so, that? We had so many problems. I mean. It happens, but right? The, well, yeah. And at least those problems were, like, fixable problems. Sure. So, you know, whatever. But, but Is that the, how soon do you think that place will be filled after you open? I don't know. I hope, I hope within six months. How long did it take to fill this one up? Four months. It's bonkers. But man. this is in a this is in an area that really, really needed it. Sure. That is like a slightly less glamorous area. Okay. So it'll re, it'll probably require a little more work than this one. This one just by being here is like a no brainer. Yeah. Because the where we are in terms of like Venice and Marina del Rey and Playa del Rey oh, sure. and Playa Vista and all these neighborhoods that are here, like if you want to live here and collect cars, like you have no option. Right. So there's no damn I am, I am the anywhere. choice. Yeah. And so, so not a trick question. If I had a car here and I call, do I say like, hey, I'm going to come pick the car up for uh, Friday night? Yeah. And it's it's washed, ready yeah. to go? Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Do you have a gas pump here? No, but we have a gas station immediately next door. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and actually that gas brilliant. station's hilarious. <clears throat> Is the gas station, there's a there's an Amazon a distribution oh, transfer center sure. right there. When they opened, this is now the gas station is like halfway between me and them. It's like a hundred yards. Sure. That gas station is a dollar more expensive a gallon than every other gas because like 150 Amazon vans a day would stop fill there. up there. Brilliant. And they're like, you know what, Bezos, I'm getting my taste. I'm gonna get a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Fortunately, brilliant. there's another gas station like pretty close. That's that, uh, but but it is interesting how that economy has like <laughs> absolutely <laughs> swashed out. What other um, what's what's next on your fun to get project list? We're doing a, a build a, a build giveaway car. We're, we're doing a, awesome. a C6 Corvette. That'll be great. It'll be fun. What are you doing with it? Right. Anything fun? We don't know yet. Um, we actually the car should Z06 be here. Or it's not a Z06. Okay. It's a it's a C6 <laughs> coupe. Z06s have gotten a little expensive yeah. to do giveaways with. Sure. Um, we don't. We it's got a few mods on it now. So we don't really know. We want to see how good or bad those mods are sure, in yeah. practice and before before we That's figure fair. out. We're doing the inspection. What That's color what is it? It is yellow. Oh, I like that. Is one of the few yellows I like in the car world. Like, it's, I not like it's, yellow, it's not bad. It's not bad. That atomic it orange on. is one of my favorite. I had a C6 atomic C6 orange C6 is good. For like yeah. three months. It was atomic orange. It's a racing they're, color they're, too. Yeah. Um, dude, so many of them are. I'm sure as you know. You need for the thumbnails on the YouTube. You need a bright color. Yeah. So I had to tell our our partners in the giveaway. I was like, no black, no silver, no white, and they're like, uh, that eliminates <laughs> like eighty, <laughs> Most of 80 them. percent of the yeah. cars for yeah. sale right now. And they're like, you know, it's I'm, a six speed. It is. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah six speed coupe. Yeah. How dare you? 
I yeah. assume. <laughs> I, hey, look, here, giveaways are different. That's true. I had one car that I was going to give away, and someone was like, I'll give you this much more. I was like, take it. I yeah. <laughs> I'm concerned about the legal standings if I give this to a stranger. Yeah, we have you know, there's we have a partner with that does the giveaways, and they have all the legal shit Good, yeah. buttoned up. It's a big so thing. so really we're the wanna, marketing partner, sure. and they're the, yeah. yeah I really yeah. want to do it, but I haven't figured out in a way that I can do it. Like, I watch... Uh, Cletus McFarland, like the giveaways and stuff, it's amazing. I want to do it. I just sometimes I see certain groups do it, and I'm not sure where the line is between this is cool, and then like I'm not knocking any of the groups that have done it, but some of these groups will sell T-shirts, and it's like you got to buy X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And I've never really understood how it works or if it is like, do you feel good at the end of it? I don't There's know. There's always a, a way to enter for free. Right. Right. It's not like easy. It, it's like rules about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. sweepstakes National stuff. Law. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to like, it's like mail a postcard in yeah. this size envelope with this at this. And you have to follow all those rules. And exactly. there are people that, you know, enter those things professionally. Sure. That's a legit. That's a great documentary. I'd love to watch. Like Absolutely, there whoa. are yeah. con- right there after are you finish the Pez up. guy. Yeah, the and p- they do like, <laughs> dude, they do like contests oh, nine to five. They just enter different contests. Whoa! So a lot of them. That's why so many times they're like, oh, you want a car or twenty five grand? They'll take the the twenty five grand every yeah. time. So a lot of these cool, like, if you think about choppers that have been built for West Coast, uh, half of those the people never took them. They just took the money. Yeah, and that's then, someone who loves fishing but doesn't want to go outside. Well, or they're they can really. Just put in the, the, line in the water. And sometimes they don't want to pay the taxes on yes, the prize the either. Taxes yeah, taxes can be insane. Yeah, so let's if take you're the money going and then... on the value that they're riding the thing off for. Right. right. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it, it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar <laughs> motorcycle, and you're like, they got twelve grand strong in there. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know for sure. You can't write off your hours. Bro. Yeah. I was like, I'm right off <laughs> Billing all these man a, hours. A G an hour. You better believe this. I am. What are you gonna yeah. when you sell that uh, M3? What are you gonna replace it with? I don't know yet. We'll see. Hmm. We'll see. I, 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 no, I don't have a plan yeah, right now. I like that. My plan is to sell that space to somebody else. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's fair. My plan. Yeah, you look at it. I got like, a waiting list in this bitch. Dude, oh, we got to get. Nice. Yeah, dead, dead cars got to go. If I'm not now, driving, here's it's a real question. Go. Do you think you could offer anybody that's long term storing cars here that don't move a spot at the other one? Yes. And that is the plan. Oh, good. That is the plan. I think that's brilliant. It's cheaper over there, too. So if you're not yeah. using the car, put it over there. Right. Yeah. It's you're, still you, see, be, you could do this it's business. It's like Fort Knox. You want a job? Yeah, come on. You never have to it? go. Can we do it in Atlanta? You I never have move. to go back to painting houses. If you ever oh, if TV great. falls apart, you could GM the new location. Let's do it. Can we if do you were the partner, I would do it in Atlanta. Oh, well, if you were the partner, it. I'd love you know, to. You, me, and Killer Mike. Uh, done. Let's, let's. That's the shop. Let's. I'll call Mike right now. That's the shop. Mike's dude. Mike. He's what a, a great. He is guy. the best. Great human being. He really is. He's the. It's I did a story so on him with Road and Track. I hung out with him all day, and he was the. the Were cooler. you in the Hellcat? Uh, we didn't. We didn't go out in the Hellcat. I went to his like warehouse yeah. in uh, his East new Point, so his cool. new building, and I hung out with him and Swift and all his fucking yeah. homies. And I took him. I got. A, I borrowed a Tycon, uh, oh, Tyke nice. from Porsche. Oh, that's right. We were texting when you were there. Yeah, I, and I let him I, have a go in the Tycon, and he think? was he was into it. Yeah, yeah, he was into it. Mike, his wife was like, "Um, I need one." Shay's amazing. <laughs> Shay Mike, <needed> Mike, <laughs> and I met through Greg Busell at Quarter Works, right? Because he had been at Grid Life, a couple other things. I invite Mike down for a, a hot rod power tour party at Kenwood Rod Shop in Peachtree City. Mike and Shay roll up in this dumped on the ground Hellcat, all black, and it looks so good. They hop out. My parents are there serving barbecue, hangs out with us the rest of the day. I say, hey, by the way, we're going to end up in Charlotte um, on Friday if you guys want to go. Uh, Steve West, who is our friend, who great photographer, Steve's there. And he's like, yeah, man, we'll, we'll, we'll be up there. Now, keep in mind, this sucker ends at, like, 3 in the afternoon. They pulled up to Charlotte at, like, 6 (laughs) p.m. And they knew, and I was like, this is Mike. This is beautiful. He's going to be a little bit late and still have a great time, be a party. But it's just been a great dude. He asked me one time. No, he didn't ask me. I was like, hey, I'm going to get you some tires for the Hellcat. He had got some new wheels. It was at Corey Works. They were going to do a photo shoot. So I call my friends at Continental, who I had done a bunch of work with, call my friend Chuck. And I was like, hey, can we get Killer Mike some tires? They're like, yeah, yeah. He roasted those rear tires off in like 45 <laughs> seconds. Awesome. Gone. 
And the brand new tires. Brand new <laughs> tires. You're yes. supposed to do that with the old I was tires, like, Mike. You know, this is not, this is not, I can't get you more. Like yeah, those that's are fair. those were the ones. But it's on like I don't know what. It's not Dub Magazine. I can't remember what <laughs> magazine it's out. But it's a great shot of Killer Mike lighting these things up. Oh, cool! Uh, in his new Hellcat. And I was like, well, Continental, here you go. Yeah, he's got fun cars. He's a big Grand National guy. Absolutely. Big G body. They're guy. building the Firebird for him right now at Cora Works. Um, which is cool. It's uh, yeah, it's those new wheels. It, you can't uh, tell they're fully fucking smoked up. Yeah, three piece. Uh, I think built those too. Um, okay. What a uh, what a great time it was. But yeah, if it was if you and Killer Mike were the, were the partners, Let's and I it. talked to him about doing some yeah. storage at his new building, so yeah. that could be the spot. It'd be awesome. Yeah, Dude, there's a bunch of cool cars in Atlanta. I mean, it's, yeah, Atlanta's great. It, it's I think Atlanta's kind of it has almost like a cyclical come up where people realize that it's cool mm-hmm. and they're like, now nah, the traffic. And they're like, then they those people who said the traffic come to LA and they're like, oh, we've got no problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a mild inconvenience at best. And the, yeah. the roads in North Georgia. So Oh, oh, dude, good. up there. And By, like, Helen. Not Helen. 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 Yeah, Helen. Helen. There's a big VW meet there this weekend, but, like, Blairsville. Yeah. All that stuff. That's where I want to find a little A-frame up there. I was in Dahlonega. Oh, yeah, great. Uh, place, that's dude. where I drove the Eddie Hall Bentley a couple months oh, ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, $10 million. I drove in the rain. <laughs> It's out of hand. Bless the Revs Institute for letting me do stuff like that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It, it is a place where if you're the passenger, you'll barf, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Just, we have so many. It's not even like Tale of the Dragon type stuff. It's just every turn feels like this. Yeah. I made one of my best friends, Dan, barf. <laughs> in my Sequoia. Oh, is even Sequoia? Trying, dude, I was just, I'm just coming down the hill. Like, here we go. Oh, he's like, man. you got you to pull over. You got to pull over. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, the road's under underrated. North Georgia is very Absolutely. underrated. Yeah, the Porsche people have, have come in and, and loved it. You know, they bought the old Ford plant mm-hmm. um, in Hapeville by the original Chick Fil A Dwarf House. That's next to uh, that's next to East Point. Yeah, yeah. And, is that the uh, one that looks like a diner? Yes, I've eaten there. Yeah, yeah. they just redid it. Now it looks wow. like a fancy diner. Oh, <laughs> you'll still love it. Sandwiches are twenty eight dollars. Absolutely, we got to yeah. pay for it. I mean. <laughs> That chicken ain't free. <laughs> We're not running a charity here. All right. So what else? What else is in the the current? So we've got the Stagia. We've got the uh, this incoming Corolla GR. Yep. School bus is gone. School bus gone. The drift truck is still being built okay. at Core Works. Okay. Those guys have crushed it. So it's got. I've got a one JZ powered uh, ninety four Toyota pickup. Oh, Tacoma. Uh, it's or is pre-Tacoma, it pre-Tacoma yeah. but it's like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's a it's a regular cab short bed. Okay. I, the bed was so beat up. I put some like wide oh, fiberglass. Oh, RutledgeWood.com slash garage. Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah, there we go. It's the Rutledge Wood because there's a oh, is wood it? flooring company in Denton, Texas no that won't sell me the really. Domain. Yeah, and they basically are like, have you offered them like, like real NBC money? Keeps sending us checks. I try to call and ask them. <laughs> They're like, man, honestly, I just don't want to change my email address. <laughs> I was like, sir, I can respect that. Because uh, it's like someone's last name of Rutledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but one, did you offer real like, real money? No, I don't even know what that's like. I don't, like, what am I going to say? Like, I'll give you. I'll tell you what. I bought WCCS.com mm-hmm. for this as opposed to Westside Collector Car Storage.com. Yeah, and it was the best $6,000 I've ever spent in my oh, life. Good for you. I think oh, if I could just buy like RUT.com, that would be easier. Maybe you but, can. Uh, okay. You know, the, the one JZ powered XB, my, oh. friend, my friend Yo, rest in peace, he had built that. That's the old school one, yeah. right? That's with my buddy Victor. Yeah, you yeah. remember Victor yeah. from Emergency Hookers Tow It? <laughs> Yeah. You, you blow it, we'll tow it. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's got that, the, the wide body Fundra. That was the first one. Then I built a, a, a four door. Um, so that that's the, one the of the Camaro. two Camaros. Tanner drove Ooh, stunts in that car. Oh, that's a Need Top Gear Speed. car, right? Yeah. Um, he he drove stunts in that. He bought one. I bought one. I sold mine like three months later. A year after that, I bought his, and then decided like maybe I didn't like it because I need to like build it because it had weird seats and stuff. It was put, literally a <clears throat> movie stunt car. right? Built it at Magnaflow in five days. Whoa! So, dude, it was slapped together. Yeah. It was rowdy as hell. Did it, but had it stood a drift up to, brake. It stood up to stunts and stuff, or uh-huh. was it a little wobbly and flimsy? Uh, it stood up, but it was built like they built it in five days. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> so we had to spend a lot of time undoing some of that stuff, but it was really fun. I'm trying to think. Uh, I saw like something from the 40s on that website. Hmm. 40s that, or 50s? That brown truck. 
Yeah. No, what's on the right? Is that a Hudson or something? That's a 53 oh, Plymouth, Plymouth Suburban. Suburban. Yeah. And uh, Richard Petty gave me that car. No way. Yeah, his son Kyle's one of my besties. Wow. Uh, Kyle, you'd love Kyle. What a, yeah? That guy's got stories for days. I set it up. I would like when he, to Kyle he, Petty. Mellow Yellow gave him a Donzi speedboat that matched the his paint fuck scheme. fuck out of here. And he got That's it. That's the dream. He he got it stuck on sand three different times in oh one my day. Oh, God. And they Qualified called, captain in the house. They got it, like, towed once, and then the other two, he was like, nah, we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get this sucker a, off. On a Donzi, too. Like, a Donzi draw has about a four-inch draw. He was, to get a Donzi <laughs> stuck at a sandbar is really uh -huh. hard. It's not exactly like a super deep V hull. I'm sure they were hauling the mail, too, when it happened. But I so, went down to Donzi in North Carolina to test drive some of their boats. They were shady. Not not criminally shady. I mean, the boats. Oh. If you want a boat, it is like, um, it, it, it is it is about as dangerous as a powerboat can be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, Twitchy. shallow hull, right. old school, no protection. Just wide ass open. Just we, uh -huh. I got stuck so in hard to on drive. Here. We were trying to go from like Miami to Key West. And at some point, I look over and I realize we're doing just above 90 on the water. Yeah. Whoa. And I was like, hey, man, I just realized I don't have a life jacket on. <laughs> and he's like, you're not going to need it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you won't live long enough to need yeah. to float. Well, then you yeah. start going <laughs> Dead people thing. float. <laughs> Wait, why will I not? Is it because yeah. nothing will happen, which is what I want to believe? And then you're no. like, oh, no, at this speed... There's no shot yeah. of living through this. <laughs> You're falling on concrete at 90 like, miles per hour. I'm like, I can still see Miami. I'm yeah. like, we're not far enough in this journey for me yeah. to feel you this You need to way. wear motorcycle leathers. Did you, I needed something. Did you ever get over the terror of that? Did it ever become fun, or was it sheer terror the whole Fell time? Fell asleep. Get the fuck out of here. It's mm. so hot, and you, whoa, <laughs> and it just beat me up, and then finally like, I've definitely fallen asleep on the back of power boats before, but never at a speed like that. It was insane. And That's the best crazy. part is they're like they're like, hey, they're shooting me sleeping and they can't use any of it. And they're like, Hey, um, you gotta wake up. And I was like, I didn't sleep. And they're like, You've been asleep for like fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just passed out again. It's so, it's so hot. I'm so sorry. It's so That's soothing. rad. Um I'm not I, the other thing I'm gonna work on, I, I Wait, traded. But Richard Petty gave you that, that? So he did. It didn't look like that. It okay. was all beat up. It had been sitting behind Petty Enterprises for years. Okay. And I kept asking the king about it. And one day he's like, You better come get it before I do something with it. And I was like, Yes, sir. And I grabbed my dad and the trailer, we went and got it the next day. That's a story. It Listen, was really Richard fun. Petty needs me to take out his trash. Okay. Okay, let's go, Daddy. Just I just saw him at the Austin NASCAR race, yeah. and he, dude, it seems like he's getting smaller. He looks with great, age. Dude. No, no, he does. But his head and his hat are the same size. Absolutely. They haven't scaled down. Absolutely. His hat is like still the kind dude, of hat 80, that someone who's six five should be wearing. Eighty three, like, eighty four. I think. Yeah. Dude looks great. Oh, he's doing it. Still going to race. I mean, yeah. first off, Jimmy Johnson came back into NASCAR. As a team owner, they're going to Toyota next year. Like, there's so much stuff that's exciting. What's happening with Michael over there? Jordan and Floyd Mayweather owning NASCAR teams? This well, is this is interesting. Michael, he's been in it for a minute. Yeah. yeah. So Michael and Denny paired up, yeah. and I think it's it's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Twenty three eleven is is they're doing great. Floyd, I think, is kind of dipping his toes in, but he's one of those guys that's really all or nothing. I think if he wants to do it, he's got to go all in. They like because they're not. Um, they're so part time that you're really kind of getting. Uh, I don't want to call them leftovers. I'm sure they're nice. I know the teams working hard, but like they aren't a regular yeah. team. If you want to, if you want a, like a real crew, they have to be full time. Yeah, you got to yeah. do it. And now like the charters are really expensive to guarantee the spots and everything else. But um, the racing's been been good with these new cars and teams are trying new stuff. So I mean, it's always this like I feel bad for NASCAR because they kind of they come up with new ways to innovate. They're trying to make the the parody a little better, and then sometimes they make it too good, and everyone's like, "I can't pass anyone." <laughs> mm. Okay, go fast enough. You're like, "Well, the are cars you safe? are pretty cool, though." Yeah, I mean, it's, it's they look great. And watching the racing at Austin on the road course was incredible. <clears throat> did I mean, you go? Did Tom go with you? For yeah, that? dude, that's so cool. That it just was great made me fun. Smile. We had such a nice time. Yeah, and NASCAR, you know, gave me passes, but they gave Tom like. 
the the, the whatever stuff. you want connection. Absolutely. So we had a, a we had a, a guide who could just take us anywhere. We got a golf cart. We got the VIP access. As we said, what do you do? Oh, I own Coda. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Oh, That's what I'm standing next to. Yeah. It's kind of a big thing. Yeah, it's very nice here. <laughs> yeah, we were in the VVIP. John Coda, nice to meet which you. Which was uh, <laughs> which was pretty awesome. And we went to we went to go do the zip line thing. I saw in Austin, you guys do that. And it the guide so was good. like. Flat. He's like, really? You want to go? We're like, why? Is it not fun? And he's like, the VIPs never ask to yeah, ride this. Yeah, because they're too cool for school. And y'all yeah. are like, there's a zip. No, line? it's fun. <laughs> is there an icing machine nearby? Yeah. <laughs> Could I borrow? Yeah, the guide this? was like, this is awesome. No one ever Absolutely, asks to do dude. things. <laughs> it's such a good time. So yeah, I, it's funny. I'm going to Indy 500. Um, Next That's on weekend? the list, too. I got to do, do it. Oh, one. you never been? No, I got to oh, do it. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Indy 500, Kentucky Derby. Mm. Go to an Olympics event. Like there's. The the derby I didn't work the derby this year because I had just come back um, from doing the show. It's it's insane. Oh, your derby suits are fucking oh, epic. Shinesty, God love them. They'll, What's it they'll, called? Shinesty. Is, is that the, where you order yeah, them that's, from? That's the company, but they'll make me my own. So they'll make them. Those are like I've had crazy NBC logoed ones, and because um, normally it's like a hundred dollar suit, and yeah. so I tell people I feel like one hundred fifty bucks in these custom ones. How do you spe- how do you? Oh, there it is. They, for the record, next theme party you have, you need to look at their website. Like oh, they have the best. Do Where you, do you? How do you get your measurements? Is it just like LXL or is it real measurements? Um, no, they have like real measurements. They do. On there. Okay. Yeah. By the Sick. way, the the jeans I'm wearing um, are blue Delta jeans. You need to check them out. You blue really Delta love them. jeans. Yeah, they're made what? in uh, handmade in Mississippi. Okay. You put in all your measurements, bespoke. Oh really? Yeah. You oh, cool. love them. All right, I'll fuck with I've that. I've never liked anything more. Oh, that the Kentucky <clears throat> Secretariat flag pants. I'm 100% with that. Yeah, I had a whole suit like that. Fucking A, that's, that's I, great. I've worn the green one there. And these are like the $150, $150 too. Yeah, they're such Sweet. a deal, dude. They're such a deal. If you, if you need a suit. This. Awesome. Bookmark this yeah, one. Flex. Yeah, Flex. Shinesy's <laughs> got some amazing stuff. And they're all like, dude, if you follow them on social, they one day realize there's a hole in their floor and it, they can send stuff down to the office of another company underneath them. So they started sending like games and they could see if you put an iPhone over it, you could zoom in and see what they were doing, like their reaction. It's just that's fun. That's, that's our kind of stuff, cool. yeah. But made into corporate. It's pretty funny. It's uh, it's beautiful. I like this. Yeah, your suits are fucking awesome. Yeah. What is your when you what is your favorite thing to commentate? Hmm. I can't I can't lie. Floor is lava is probably my favorite yeah. thing ever that I've commentated because I just had no idea how many people would see it and love it and families like watch together. So that's probably number one. Then I'd put I think NASCAR um, after that because it just feels like you know feels like home. I've done that mm-hmm. for so many years. Indy's really fun. It's so fast paced. They're great racing. The 500 is incredibly cool. It it feels like you're at something really special start to finish. It's just it's it's a great group of people and those drivers are really fun uh i've gotten to know a bunch of them um i don't know and and anytime i get to do olympic stuff derby is so fun you've never seen more attractive people barf in public (laughs) (laughs) you i'm telling you you are watching Uh, what looks like supermodels say to their friend hold my hat that's holy shit and then they barf in like a standard that's great really funny Everywhere. I'm, because I'm I don't pro, know if you've I'm heard. i pro this. So, like, can I borrow the, your glass you're drinking out of? So, yeah. let me tell you, if you go to the Kentucky Derby, um, you're going to order a mint julep. Right. What they do is they put ice in this glass, and then they pour bourbon all the way up here. <laughs> then they put a splash of simple sugar and drop a mint leaf on top of it. <laughs> Rudd is holding a pint glass for everybody yeah. listening. Yeah. Dude, everyone is bourbon. housed. That's everyone. Funny. That's like are, a Jersey Shore level of drunk. Dude, it's insane that's what and so all these people are like yeah i'll get another mint julep it's just a so everyone's college drinking but people are probably like but 30s and yeah. 40s so they're not tr- they're not back in the day they would college kids would show up early and they would dig a little hole in the infield and bury liquor and then come back for it two it's days like Australia. Later. they do that wow. at the 24 hours of nurburgring no they way. bury yeah they bury all oh, kinds of booze in there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've run around nurburgring right I've driven it. Yeah. I've never been there for a race, but yeah, I've driven it. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. Tanner, oh, it's Tanner incredible. Faust, let me tell you why. I love Tanner for a million reasons, but Homeboy is so well connected. When we were there for Top Gear, they shut it down for us for three hours, and it was like living in a video game. Yeah. I've just, the whole time your mind is trying to process, like, okay, here comes the carousel. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, it's just, you can't make sense of it. It's did you best. drive it or just ride with Tanner? Oh, drove Both? it. Okay. Drove yeah. it. I, I did... I think I'd hit one 
I was real close to 180. I hit 180 what were you, what were on, you in? on the um, Autobahn. On Autobahn. Yeah. And that's just. As you do. It's next level. I was yeah. in a Carrera 4S. Oh, yeah, okay. And so it's, was, got, it's got it. It feels illegal, and you just go, it's not, though. So it's cool. not, though. Then you slow down to like 150 and get passed by a grandma. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you're like, this place rules. Driving yeah, across Germany at like 4 o'clock in the morning was like one of the great joys of my life because I just I sustained. Bet. What that were you pace. in? Uh, uh, BMW uh, Alpina B8. Oh, yes. Fucking mobbing. It's like that, the one that, that somebody here just bought for pennies. Oh, no, no. That Well, that's a B7. This oh, was the brand right. new B8. But oh, yeah, 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 it was a 600 horsepower. You just feel like a mob boss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I found driving the Porsche Carrera 4S there was so... I don't know if it's still considered patriotic if it's another country. I'm sorry, someone will have to fact check me. Hmm. It was like doing a burnout in a Camaro in Daytona holding a PBR to them. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, everybody was like, you're with me. Yeah. yeah. You're cool. I've never been in a car in a place that I felt like everyone was just like, you're okay. You ever, you've I never like driven you. a Ferrari in Italy. Correct. Is that, it the same way? It, more. Oh, you're a god. Gosh. Yeah. You're a god. Because oh, they cool. not only is it so tied to the identity of the yeah. country and the sport, you know, and all that stuff, but... Italy is a very small market for those cars. Sure. People don't have the money for them. Right. Even like pretty rich people that. don't have the money for them. So they don't see them around. Like in Germany, oh, there's nine wow. elevens like around. Mm-hmm. Like in Italy, if you drive an Aventador or a or a, a high a Ferrari, you're a god. Yeah, it's yeah. it's on another That's, level. I pulled over to put a top up in a what two nine six spider and this guy walked up and he was just mesmerized. Yeah. In, in Italian, he asked if he could sit in it and take a photo. I was like, yeah, sure. Just took the key with me and did that. And he was just so, so grateful. Yeah. That's really amazing. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's like, if that's a thing that if you get to do, you it's the close the closest to godliness that you could be. Right. Except maybe that's driving awesome. like a classic Ferrari over there, in which case it's like you might yeah. as well just be fully. Then it's different. Did yeah. you sell the Countach? No, no. It's in the middle of a long and that's right. expansive the crazy, restoration. The crazy resto. Yeah, Is yeah. it with another car? What's the other car there at his shop? Didn't no, you the Ferrari? my Ferrari was, but it's back and okay. it's great. Yeah. We're going on June 2nd. We are going to visit Donnie in the desert, and we are going to help him pull the engine out of the Countach from the top. It goes out through the top. Really? You don't drop it down. Yeah. And the gearbox has to stay attached. So you have to like... Like banana the whole thing out from under the car. It's a crazy process. This is a little bit of that, like people say, don't meet your heroes in a weird way. But you're not only meeting them. Now you're like, let me replace your knee. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. No, but, but you're like helping. You're there. helping balance this thing because it takes like four people to get the engine out. So wild. and like Zach's gonna be pointing a camera at mm-hmm. us because you might as well monetize Absolutely. your misery. Absolutely. Um, but it's okay. The Countach has not disappointed at good, all. Good. It is, that, that car has, is not Are remotely Are you physically disappointed. comfortable in the driver's seat? Yes. That's great. I have to take my shoes off. Okay, because the pedals aren't the pedals like are a little, little bit offset. Yeah, but, yeah. but it, once you take your shoes off, you I can stretch my left leg behind the clutch pedal straight out. So And there's actually, it's more comfortable for me than a Huracan or an Aventador. That's wild. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did you find, I can't fit in an S2000. Without. I can't either. The and steering was, wheel position is It was off. one of those ones that I couldn't get your left, for yeah. as tall as we are, my left leg. But then yeah. you can get in a Miata. And then I was like, what the hell? Yeah. This doesn't That's make a good any question. sense. That's it is an question. automotive travesty that some the ergonomics people, of a Miata absolutely. are better. Absolutely. Like, yeah. It's so wild. Yeah. And because there are some people, someone made a seat mount that would lower the S2000 seat a little bit. And I was like, I can't try to buy a car with the hopes of one day being able to drive. Right. So like, that in, doesn't in line my up. Ferrari 328, I had Donnie cut the seat mount. So he really? cut an inch out of the, it. Still slides, but the actual seat is an inch lower. That's brilliant. Yeah, night and, and day for you. It's in the, there? They call it the Tom Selleck mod because it's what they had to do to the th- Magnum 308. That's brilliant. Yeah, a lot of people thought my little K van that I had that I was doing like an island hopper or whatever the tour company that they have. Yeah, that's what they thought I was doing with a theme, and I was like, no, but that's a brilliant <laughs> idea. I should really work on that. Yeah. Because Tom Selleck's like six five, right? So he he couldn't fit in. So it, it only it's only an inch, but it's a when you've only got an inch, an inch makes a big difference. It does. I just realized I um I bought a new K truck. Yes. Uh, Which one? Sick. I bought a Subaru Sambar. Oh yeah, those are rare. Supercharged, five what? speed four by four. Oh yeah, they made a Factory? supercharged. Yep. 
Is it a little sign- a centrifugal it's snail? Be tiny. I haven't seen it yet. It's on a boat right now. Uh, Gary Duncan. Have you ever been to oh, Duncan yeah. Imports? That's where my pal came from. Oh, of course. Dude, yeah. Gary's so fun. So I called Gary one day and I was like, hey, I'm looking for this thing. And he's like, I've never heard of one. I went, <laughs> oh, man. What if it's what if the one I saw was like swapped? Yeah. Because there's a guy, OK Garage, um, who is so fun. And uh, I was like, yeah, I, I'm looking for this thing. Gary's like, okay, well, I'll start digging. So he finds one, and then two days later found another one. He bought both of them at the auction. He's like, yeah, you come up, and you just pick which one you like better. They're similar miles. So it, so it's a, it's a K, so it's a 660cc Correct. with a supercharger. With a yes. And so instead of like 60 horsepower, it makes like 77? It'll fly. <laughs> and then OK, O-H-K-E-I, OK Garage has That's like, they're name. making, it's really good. Very good name. He's in, I feel like he's in Oregon maybe, mm. but he's making little mini headers. He's got all sorts of parts <laughs> for them. I feel like a little bit bad. Is this a bad. header for Ents? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I expect you to get in the building. So I've already ordered. I've got a set of JDM Volks sitting in my living room right now for a vehicle size that eight. I have not yet finished what purchasing. What size are the wheels? They're 15 by 7. Oh, oh that's right. bigger than I thought. They're perfect. I think that might be the same as the front wheels in the Countach. Oh, I bet. Right? <laughs> I think it is. The Countach is a How'd one. How you find tires? Pirelli makes them. Oh, that's yeah, great. They didn't for a long time, sure. but they do now. Because that's such a, I mean, they're so wide yeah, on yeah, the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 345, 55, 15s, baby. <laughs> It's like a square. It's the they made like eight tire. sets and the they'll just weirdest wait. Tire ever. Yeah. Now the one that you can't get tires for is the LM, the SUV. Oh. LM002. Can't get the tires for no that. No kidding. They're fucking expensive. Have you driven one? Yeah. What's it like? A truck. It is yeah. a truck with a Countach engine. I would it. read DuPont Registry when I was at the grocery store with my mom, and I was like, this is the coolest vehicle ever. Yeah, it's yeah. It's so ugly that it's pretty. Yeah. Right? Like, it's not, I don't think it has an attractive line on it. It's yet, the it's Adam so Driver of, uh, How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. No, but it's very charming. Yeah, it's I like bet. it's terrible, but it's charming. Like in ways that like a Hummer is not that charming. Sure, unless you're like happen to be going through four feet of water or whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. It's charming, and you know, it you you drive it, and it's like a fucking Countach powertrain. It's a dog leg. Is it a Countach power band? Like, do they? They know they recam the it. Oh, they re- yeah, ah. they recam it. And then there's the LM002 American, Ooh. which is has a different engine. That one has the. Lamborghini offshore powerboat racing engine in it. So it's really? like punched out and it's got forged everything. No way. Yeah, it makes a bunch more power. Whoa. They couldn't have sold more than a handful, like right? Like 10. Okay. Yeah, like 10. <laughs> but there but it but it is a different thing with a different engine. So they re they recam it for a little more torque. So it's not I kind of want to find a beat up Gallardo for some reason, but I don't really. Like I, you, I just, do. you don't want an 04. Right. Any if, if you've an 05 with a zillion miles on it is what you want. Because what an was a big change four to five? The engine. Oh, okay. 04 is a one year only engine. <laughs> that's oh, how, that's, that's how, usually a good that's sign. How bad you yeah, don't. Want. Redesigning an engine is pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah, launching so cheap. a car yeah. and then putting a new engine in it for year two. Is yeah, not that's a true. Gross. I had a that's buddy, be fresh. my yeah. buddy Travis. They call him Hoodrich. He's in Memphis and. Uh, he bought one. I don't know if it was 04 or 05, but the starter went out, and he called the dealership, and it was like 1300 bucks. He popped it out and decided to check the numbers and cross where this is it. going. It was, a, it was a TDI Beetle yeah. starter. <laughs> $87 later, he's yeah. in business. And yeah. I was like, so the original, wow. yeah, the original 5.0 um, Lamborghini, the, the, the 2004, yeah. was two. Of the Volkswagen like two point five, oh, no, yeah. the two point five four cylinders, really? Uh, yeah, but it didn't work so good, so they, re- des- they redesigned it later. I didn't know that. Yeah, they redesigned that later, and then, uh, sorry, it was yeah the two point five uh, five, five cylinder. Right? Excuse yeah. me, excuse me. But so they redesigned it for the five point two, and then they took that design and went back to Audi to make the RS three engine. Oh, cut it in half again. They cut it in half again. <laughs> Yeah. Cut it half. They, they, they took the clay and they're like, no, no, this isn't good. They mushed it back together yeah. and then they made a new engine. And, and then they cut it half, half again and made another five. new engine. It's pretty brilliant. Someone yeah, asked yeah. me, like, if I was on this show, if I was on Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge, what would I do? And I was like, I would want to put a Gallardo underneath a Volkswagen Rabbit pickup. Hell yeah. And just do a good way Ooh. of making everything work. I think That's there was a idea. guy who did a Gallardo. Was Mint it green? Yeah. Was it, was it Danton? 
Was it Danton Custom? Somebody did a Gallardo, but turned it into like an open wheeled, like rat rod kind of thing, yeah. and it was batshit. It was completely they're fucking gnarly, off the but, wall. They, yeah. but those are those ones that I'm like, they're cool, but the price point they they've gone up. At least the ones I've seen that I'm like, eh, half of these oh, were it was, rentals. That was it. It was that the the, the Espada. Look, uh, second from the left on the top there. That's the the Danton Espada. That thing is awesome. Which That's is quite gnarly. quite Hot pretty wheels. actually. That's yeah. I think good. so. I, I traded. I pulled a Jeep out of a junkyard, a Wrangler that we found 19 grams of meth in. <laughs> I called my cop friend. I was like, I think I found something. You should come check it out. So he came, looked at. It, he's like, my kid. Paid for the Jeep. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thousand bucks. It was, uh, and it had been hidden in the back of my friend's junkyard for like 10 years, and it looked like old, like rock salt or something. I don't know how to describe it, but it was in a Bob Marley custom center console. So I mm. should have really known. <laughs> What was coming? I good point. Worst I, places to hide your yeah, drugs. Right. This guy. The best part is. Yeah, I was a chef. It's the finishing salts. You know? Perfect. I open up the glove box. I find all these tickets, and my friend that's a cop. I see his name on one of the citations. <laughs> so I call him, and I was like, "Do you remember this thing?" He's like, "No, it's been ten years." So we come over, check it out. So sure. So Jay gets over there, and he's doing his test kit, and he's like, "Man, I, I think." Mine's not showing up. This is too old. I'm gonna call these other guys now. It's in my like the back of my house, so it's in this like pasture, right? And it's I don't know a hundred yards from my house. So you have to drive down this little gravel drive to get out there. It's on my car trailer. My friend Dan that works for me, he was standing there, and these other two cops show up, and they're like checking it out. They go to test it, and they're like, "Yeah, thumbs up. It's positive." And I was like, "Well, that's cool, guys. I gotta go do a voiceover in the closet. Um, if y'all need anything, just let me know." And these other two cops apparently like, "Bro, where's he going? He can't. He can't leave." Right. And Jay, Jay my <laughs> they start they up. start running fingerprints yeah. on the bag and Jay's on like, you. He called. He us. called us. We're in his backyard. <laughs> Everything's yeah. fine, guys. But so like two weeks later, we're at some like fundraiser car show, and I'm talking to another cop, and my friend Jay comes over there. And uh, and one of them's like, oh, is this the meth guy? And I was like, Wait, that's not a story yeah. that we're going to share. You're the meth guy. That story is not worthy of a no, nickname. No. It's I was like, did I own a Jeep that had meth in it? Yes. But y'all took it. Yeah. I called you. Did you see the video that came out yesterday of the <laughs> congressman that they found? The cops found. Not, was it a congressman? Or, I think it was a representative. Excuse oh, me. Dear. Not a congressman. Representative was found passed out in his Mazda CX-5 with a crack pipe in his hand. It's tough. And a lot of other drugs in the car, oh, too. Bless their it hearts. Was, uh, it was like, I've been re-watching The Sopranos for the 77th time. It was a real Christopher Moltisanti moment. Wow. Like, Have you watched it, uh, Shrinking on no, Apple? No. Do I need to? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Great, it's a great show. Is Michael Imperioli in it? Is that why no, you... No, yeah, okay. I just was thinking about great shows where oh, okay. they have an impact. Oh, uh, are you I'll a Ted it. Lasso fan? I am a Ted... I've watched Ted Lasso, yeah. Okay, I am so Ted Lasso same fan. people, like Bill Lawrence, who made Scrubs, uh-huh. Cougar Town, Spin City. So Bill Lawrence is behind um, Shrinking, him and Jason Segel. Uh, I like Jason Segel. You'll and love Harrison it. Ford, okay. yeah. You'll, yeah, Harrison, oh, Harrison Ford. Ford. Now, it's kind of... Have you seen Stutz on Netflix? Yes. Okay, so Harrison Ford is trying to play a character that is loosely based on Stutz, oh, mostly... Okay. Because they didn't want to pay Stutz to, to license everything, so um, I think that's such a phenomenal. Was that show piece ap- of come out after the Jonah Hill documentary? Correct. Oh, so someone saw that and was like, "Well, this is a this is a this yeah. is a comedy. This is a good. Well, this is a good <laughs> angle to take." Uh, I thought that Jonah Hill thing was sweet. Dude was awesome. I, yeah, I loved. I loved. Uh, talk about getting behind the, the wall, like to to break the fourth wall in the way that they did. Yeah. Uh, was huge. And any of us, like some of us who might have been big kids, like we also found this moment where I was like, bro, I feel you. Like yeah. what a what a huge thing that was to face the demons like that. I don't know how I got from telling you about the Jeep. Oh, meth. I was going to tell you, I traded that Jeep to my friend Randy. You, me, and Jonah Hill all lost a, weight yeah. by doing meth. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I didn't, but I've heard about it. I've heard about it. Um, no, I traded that Jeep for a 56 Ford F1. And I kind of I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it. I don't know if I want to go like super ratty. I liked building this blazer and leaving the patina. That looks that's like an icon uh, derelict yeah, situation. I just, the patina is good. Well, and also I'm not worried about where I park it. Oh, and it looks things. like a little beat up. It's got the big front window. Dude, these are Can great you looking fit trucks. In that? Yeah, you do. Yeah, great now trucks. I'll do. Uh, TMI makes a bench for it. I oh, think that's that, a perfect. That has bench. like more. And they're a little bit lower, a little bit. Um, 
give you as much. Room I can't as you fit can in them truck from the fifth. Those any of those trucks from the fifties. I don't fit. In the them factory shit. benches are up and they're just too big. Mm-hmm. So and everything the factory you put in is usually huge. So oh, it's, dude, yeah. they're gig- I had a fifty-three. Yeah. Would we? Would we just be like giants in the fifties? Like what? We would be farmers. <laughs> we would be. But that's far who's more driving these things. things. Put you in the circus. But that's who's driving they, these they, things. We would basically be like the family ox. Yeah. <laughs> they would be like, oh, just have Matt run to the field. Yeah. He'll be fine. We'd be engine hoists. <laughs> yeah, we, we would pull a plow. Very strong. <laughs> it would be a different thing. Yeah, these are. There's something cool about these that I that I love. I mean, I always try to figure out how can I incorporate who I am into build. So my first thought was like. Tees. Two, two Jay Z super swap. Tees look good on everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Dump it on some bolts. Like, Actually, no one's ever I, seen I that. I think might not look good on that, I have to say. You say that now. <laughs> you want to bet? Dude, bagged out. I bet. I mean, you'd have to airbag. Yeah, those it are the, so look at that picture, Zach. Sure. Those are the Boyd Coddington wheels that Musto has on his charger. Yeah, 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 he has some. He has some old, old school Boyd Coddington. Wheels. But see, I think that one looks like good. That. Yeah, though, no, there are some modern wheels that could look good, but I don't think TEs are the ones. I know you're right. You need a little yeah. more. I mean, offset wise, it's the hardest part. But I'm sure great. we have uh, a bunch of shit on the Patreon yeah, for we you. Uh, oh, we great. should get I'm to so some sorry. of that because I'm sure. Do you have a time limit? No. Okay. For you. Cool. cool. Mm. We got a bunch. If you want to ask questions of our guests or mm. us. For the live stream, patreon.com slash the Smoke Entire Podcast. Mm-hmm. Also get our show ad-free. Get it early. Yeah. All kinds of benefits. Yeah, subscribe, guys. Come on. Like, like and it. subscribe. Uh, Clinton Cassatin, Cassatin says, What's uh, up? Will you, Rut, will you be featured on an episode of Bus Bros? What uh, is Bus Bros? That is um, Scott McLaughlin and Joseph Newgarden. Oh. It's really fun. Have you met either of those guys? No. Oh, you'd love them. But what is the what is the bus? It's is just it a, like they're a adventures. podcast. They're sharing a bus. Oh, okay. Uh, because they're either frugal or smart or both. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so they both sleep in this bus together Aww. at all the IndyCar races. It's really fun. Uh, I would love. And they to, do a uh, bus podcast. Is that what the yeah, show is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. It's just fun YouTube videos of them together. Oh, cool. Uh, I am keeping up. Uh, with IndyCar. It's real. I'll tell you this. Oh, we were in the UK making this show, and uh, it's really, really difficult to keep up with any American motorsport over there. To to find a NASCAR fan, and I've met NASCAR fans from all over the world, it is absolute dedication yeah. to watch NASCAR, IndyCar. Uh, FD wasn't really going on, so I couldn't really, that wasn't a, a thing when I was there, but it's hard to do that. So, yes, I'm, I'm trying to. I'll be at the Indy 500. Working though, yeah, yeah, no, common, no just no. chilling. Here's a weird one. I was working that race last year, and this year I'll be interviewed. And you're hanging out. You're on the other yeah. side. That's oh, cool. That's a, Excellent. It's, it's cool, but it's a little bit weird. But it'll be, mm-hmm. it's, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, it's different because it's like my same friends and coworkers. Right. And like, hey, while y'all go to the meeting, I'll just be over here. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me when it's done. That's weird. You're on yeah. the other side. Like, hey guys, <clears throat> I'm not walking with you everywhere this time. Totally yeah. different. Yeah. Uh. Tom says, Rutledge, do you have an oddball car on your driving bucket list? Like something Ooh. weird. I feel like this question was asked of us last episode. That was exactly asked of us. Oh, that's okay. a good question. Uh, the first or one, something okay. brass era, something weird in French. Anything you want to drive that you've never driven? I do. I think I do think Citroens are, are funky and fun. I had a buddy. One of our Top Gear producers had one. Um, I'm not totally sure. I, I will continue to do the same thing, which is to get cars, work on them, tinker, and sell them. So uh, post-Stagia, who knows what other kind of fun stuff. There's I like the really weird stuff, though. Yeah. And this, especially the cars coming from Japan that we still, a lot of them, we still are just learning the names of them. Like, some of them are so funky and so weird that I can't help but love them. I just saw someone had imported another car that looked kind of like an auto zam, but oh, wasn't. Oh, perfect. The AZ1 is on the AZ1s list. are great. I'm absolutely going to yeah. get one of those. Uh, so Gary you know Duncan's the rear the rear subframe of that is the same as the front subframe of a Mazda 323. Really? Yeah. I, I so not I'm, I'm told that they have a very bizarre handling <laughs> have you characteristics. Ever one? Yeah, they're real fun. They're, they're super cool. cool. You feel like this is a go kart for sure. Yeah. yeah, and the move is to take out the stock seats and put in Lotus Elise seats. You get like oh, way more room. I did not. know Yeah, that. yeah. That's the that's the move if you're like over five ten. Okay. But so apparently Mazda three two three parts can make the rear end behave a lot better. 
That's great to know. Good to know. Right? Yeah, AZ1, that's going to be next. Uh, Luke says, uh, you all have often espoused that you can't unshitbox a shitbox, regardless of how much you mm. spend. Uh, with that in mind, what car has the largest disparity in trim levels but the same basic platform? I mean, Chevy Silverado U-Haul truck to Escalade V is pretty a pretty big solid. spread, right? Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty solid. I was thinking more of like, I was thinking like old school, like Sentra to SER. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's as good of a one. I don't I know if that's, that's as big of a spread. It's really not. Single yours, cab Chevy Silverado work truck to Escalade V. That's like yeah. thirty grand to a hundred and forty grand. Dude, the amount of money that people were paying over to get one of those V's first <laughs> is so dumb, so so bad. I yeah, don't, it's, it's, the race to be first. Yeah, it's very dumb. It's weird, but also like I don't want to be day one because those always have problems. Yeah. Right, I mean, it's no for yeah. uh, Gallardo. They like, might change just, the engine the yeah, next year. Like, what do you do <laughs> then, man? What a weird time. Uh, Chet says, hey, Rudd, what was it like interviewing Drake Tipsy at the Kentucky Derby? Do you mean the rapper Drake who was Tipsy? He and Jack Harlow were there. Oh. Uh, can I tell you what I, that I, When was I like? read that, I was like, who's Drake Tipsy? <laughs> that was a lower, <laughs> lowercase T. Was yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a really great question. That interview was supposed to happen at noon. It's me and Dale Jr. It's supposed to happen at noon. They don't show up. Okay, it'll be one. They don't show up. Two. Surprise, <laughs> they don't show up. And I'm the whole time I'm like, they're puking guys, the bush. there's no way they're here yet. This thing, the main race happens just before 6 p.m. Oh, they're not Zero showing up at noon? They're here. No. Yeah, yeah. What a bunch of squares. They would never be here. This. <laughs> they're like, well, they're filming a video, so we're going to go down to where they're filming it, and maybe we can get it a little bit later. I was like, okay. Now, keep in mind, this is my friend Dale Earnhardt Jr., who Dale is a huge deal. Yeah. Right? Like, everywhere you go, everyone knows who my man is. No offense, he's not a dude that has classically been the like, hey, why don't you wait on this other superstar? Like, he's not been in that orbit, and he shouldn't be. So he also is like kind of his interest. You is don't waning. disrespect Dale Jr. That's right, and I'm like, I'm with, I'm with him. You do it for Dale. That's right. You got to do it for Dale. Yeah. Three for Dale every time. So the best part is we go down to where they're doing this thing, and Dale's kind of like, look, man, I got love with you. I don't want to do this, but I know you do. So I'm going to do this, but I think this is stupid. And I was like, I love you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. And then we go in there finally, and I see Drake, but he's not a part of it. So he's way over here. You see these glasses. Like, I I can't see a thing. These aren't (laughs) to just make me look slightly nerdier. I really need them. They're to make you look relatable. So here's it's Dale, then Jack Harlow, and me, and we're doing this interview. And then out of nowhere, here's Drake. And he scared the absolute crap out of me. And all you hear me go is, oh, Drizzy, what up? Like, I just went right to it. That's like those Instagram videos where he just, like, rolls up on people and bugs them out. He's really good at it, turns (laughs) out. But, like, then it's just, it's just Drake. And we're just talking, and I'm I'm reaching for every song title he's ever had Ooh, in this moment. I'm like I'm thinking for good puns, whatever. And my heart says like "Girls Like Girls Where I'm From" is a great work that in. I'm like wrong audience. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> in so Kentucky. finally, I'm like, man, this is crazy, you know, Drake. I mean, here, Jack, you understand? You guys, you start from the bottom. Now you're, now you're here. here. Yeah. And they're like, hey, cornball, <laughs> like they both start cracking up, and they're like, this is so cheesy, bro. And I was like, I'm. So I know. I, I get it. It's for the That's masses. Hilarious. But it was great. And then it ends up on, like, TMZ, uh, and it gets passed around all these different places. And the best part, we walk off, and Dale Jr. is like, that was that was so fun to watch that happen. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you were really – he's oh, like, dude, man. you shined in that moment. He's like, I don't know what – I have no idea how I would have possibly tried to take that. And you just ran with it. That was awesome. <laughs> I was like, thanks, dude. He got to watch you get thrown in the water and then just he swim. Lo- was like, he wow. was laughing the whole time. I loved bet. every bit of it. That's, That's so funny, funny as hell. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Dan B. wants to know uh, b- BTS Top one. Gear stories. Yeah. Um, and any chance for the availability of mediums like YouTube that you and the fellas could create content together again? Yes. I actually um, was kicking the idea around of like, we might be able to go make a new one. Um, one of the UK guys got hurt in their mm-hmm. um, yeah rolled a three. Yeah, bus is hard. Oof. That's a that's a terrible car, and he's way too tall for that. Anyway, so um, yeah, I was kind of kicking the idea around. I love Tanner and Adam. They're they're you know brothers to me. So I really want to go do another 
show like that. I think the thing we did so well was like the fun journeys and stuff. Yeah. Um, and there's absolutely room for it. I think what's tough is that pride's hard for people to put away sometimes. And I think they, I think BBC kind of messed that up with history. When the mm-hmm. UK, the reason we stopped, the UK guys get fired and then BBC tried to charge history more money for our show. And history's like, no, we'll pay the same. And so they get in this little like tizzy. And they were like, well, we'll go, we'll take the show somewhere else. But they couldn't because everyone wanted the three of us. So when they went to go talk to Discovery anybody else, they couldn't take us with them. Because oh, wow. we were signed to both okay. of them together as this other yeah. like entity. So they made the first one. They made six shows. It was on BBC America. Nobody saw it. Um, and Dax was so sweet. Uh, he and I became friends doing our version of the show. And he kind of asked me for his blessing, which I thought was so sweet and unnecessary. And I love him. Um, but I feel like they're kind of done at this point, too. I don't know if they're going to do more. But uh, I'd love to go make another show with Adam and Tanner. I'm going to marry Tanner uh, later this no, – wait. You're I'm going to officiate. You're Thank officiating. You. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Have you officiated Felt other like a weddings? a different announcement. Uh, yes, one. I never what wanted kind to of, do it. What kind <clears throat> of fake uh, license do you have? Uh, whatever the one, the 10-minute one. <laughs> yeah. It takes two minutes or Don't whatever. you have the fake license yeah. also? The Church Ministry of, of whatever the fuck? I got asked or something like that. to do it multiple yeah. times, and I always said no. Every <laughs> one of those marriages failed. No. Oh. And I'm not saying I jinxed it. I'm just saying, like, it They would have succeeded if you had done it. Absolutely. Yeah. If, and I think that's how or, I have to look Ordained from the human fund. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I'll, You'll be uh, great. he and Alicia are uh, are so cute. I cried when they asked me. I was like, oh, my God. That'll be fun. You're gonna, do you have a suit ready is the mm. question. You, you got to China 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 you, you know where I'm going. You, you got to get him, make, have him like, uh, like a monster energy uh, driving Oh, it's rock, it's got to be rock it's star. It's star. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Wrong energy drink. Suit. That'd be yeah, pretty funny. Great idea. With his face printed on it, maybe? That'd be pretty fucking awesome. What if I just get a suit with his face all over You should. He can't tell me don't wear that. You, de- <laughs> you definitely Damn, should. Good matter, you, right? I got married in a suit that had a, on the inside liner was a oh, picture of my it? wife asleep with a cat on her face. Didn't it also have the, the same? The vest had my safari pattern yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's G. That's, that was very good. That's, I miss um, that car. I'm, I'm trying to lose enough weight to put that suit back. <laughs> Hell yeah, good for you. You look great. But at least the guy who I sold it to did keep the interior. Well, good. He threatened to get rid of it. Oh, dude, it was so perfect. Yeah, I, it I don't was know. everything. He was like, "Oh, this car is great, but I got to get rid of this interior." I'm like, "Oh, I need your money, but oh. <laughs> dude, that's I yeah. think that might be my favorite Safari. At least oh, let me so drive good. his before. And, They're so and fun, right? It's great. I, I yeah. want one. Yeah. If I find a money tree, get on the list. Going to Lee Keen's house. Season two of, of Hot Wheels. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Season 12, it'll be it'll uh, work out. <clears throat> James Cowley, favorite cr- songs for cruising along the beach. Ooh. Four picks from each, you greedy fuck. I'll give, you, I'll give you two. That's a full playlist. I got one. I'm gonna, uh, okay, what do you got? I'm going to go Party in the USA. <laughs> it's a crowd favorite. <laughs> don't, don't act like it's not a jammer. When it comes on... You can't not tap. It's like scientifically engineered to make you have a good time. Cruising but. on the beach. I play a lot of Tupac. In mm. that in that situation, all eyes on me era. Or what yeah, are we yeah, about? yeah. Okay. Um, actually, to be, I'm lame. I go through the greatest, the greatest hits album. I also play a lot of Gaslight Anthem. I really like the oh, Gaslight yeah, Anthem, been. Fifty Nine Sound. I like that a lot for cruising. I like yeah. a tiny. Tiny Moving Parts is one of my favorite bands. I like anything from them. Uh, I'm going to give you one. Don't Hate Me by Lola Young. She's British. Oh, um, okay. It's real catchy. Uh, and I'm going to give you. Uh, hold on. It's a Millen Collins song. I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to find it for you there. Well, you find, most yeah, what's most of my drives along the beach that are memorable are at nighttime. Like, I take press cars up to, like, mm, Malibu yeah. at night. So I come down at, in the evening, and I really like, <clears throat> not to go back, but uh, Killer Mike's song, Anywhere But Here. Mm. He's got, like, great groove, and he's talking about driving through New York at nighttime, and it's just like, this is a good nighttime beach Dude, his new one. J- jammer uh no cigar by mill and colin that mm. was the other one mm. uh we're gonna do questions that are just specific to rut okay. and we'll leave the we'll leave mm-hmm. the random ones to the I next crew show no no that was that's fine but we just have like a lot and so mm. i want to get Great. to the ones that are for you Absolutely. and not waste your time david says uh rut you've had your share of experiences with the supercharged toyota 5.7 v8 was it as rowdy a package uh at, to experience as the mm-hmm. specs on paper would lead you to believe Absolutely. I loved it. It That's was a good kit. so fun. Yeah, it's a good kit. Um, I had it tuned by this guy in Texas whose name I can't remember, and it was like the cheat code of all cheat codes, and it ripped. I missed that truck. Those, that was really fun. I couldn't believe they sold that 
TRD blower to people. Absolutely. It was a shitload of power. It was a ton. Yeah. And by the way, those trucks are so torquey. Like, they're really fun to drive just around. And, man, it just turned it all the way up. Yeah. The yellow um, one, the two-door I built, I think it's in Canada. That's, I think, one of the only cars that if I had a chance to buy it back, I think I'd buy it back. There was a press, a press <clears throat> one at one point when they first launched that package. They had a press truck, and it, that thing did such good burnouts. It, it might have great. been that one. Really? So I found that truck sitting behind the Toyota building. Someone had backed into it with a forklift, <laughs> and it was from, they called it Project Omega. They were trying to show dealers that, hey, we could make a truck that's like the Lightning and sell it, and they weren't sure, like, what's the line, like, what are people going to do? And so it they might just, have been the same truck. It might have been. It had TRD big brake kit. <laughs> what on color it. was it? It was red. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So that's the truck. I ended up getting it. Um, yeah. My friend Paul Dosh will help me get that. And I did a 2016 TRD Pro front end on there, and I put the bed from the double cab on there because it's the same size. Uh, and then we did the, like the wide body kit, took it to SEMA, everything else. I took that thing on the Hot Rod Power Tour. That's a what did it that run? That was a great one. Uh, I didn't run any um, drag strips oh, okay. with it. I bet it would be like probably like low twelves, maybe. Yeah, I think so. For it, sure, dude, maybe it that's scooted. fast. It was yeah. and it was a regular cab short bed. They're hard thing. to find. Yeah, two wheel drive. I missed. They're that bitching. One. But I couldn't like my kids couldn't go with me. So also I was like I can't I yeah. can't keep on. So your, I, your I kids sold can't that, fit in the K truck though. No. Oh, they can in a sandbar. They could. Back well, back also, they're not bed. gonna. Is, a van, like, is it a van or a flatbed truck? A flatbed. Oh, it is a flatbed. Oh, I didn't realize. You throw on the back like a bench. No, I could. Yeah. do that. Down. I'm in Georgia. It's redneck. Right? It, it, it's fine. I think there. they'd rather ride my Polaris Razor, but uh, that Pro R. Have you been in one of those? <sighs> Not a pro. We just did the XP. Oh, that's launch. right. What'd you think? It looked great, it was dude. Fun. I haven't gotten to drive to drive one. It's Nobody amazing. watched the video, but it was no, great. Dude, yeah, really? No, really? I did. I did. I thought it was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> No, Thank you. you were, your your skill, view is worth like like fifty regular people. Your views. speed was sketchy enough that I was like, <laughs> if you don't do these, a no lot, one told no one told us anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Dude, that pro R is so me- surprisingly I, little instruction. Yeah, yeah, which is great. Here you go. It's funny. I've got mine, and I thought like I'm pretty good at this. And then Tanner, I stayed with him over New Year's, and my friend Josh is with me. So we go out, and he's like, Hey, can you come help me? I need to take some pictures out in the desert. And I was like, Yeah, dude, let's go. It's different. Watching oh, Tanner yeah. Yeah. wheel a, a bone stock Polaris Razor Pro R is like watching someone who's really good at, at, at being a key player in a symphony w- without any warm up, just sit in with someone else. Yeah. Like he just, mm, we went out to where they do King analogy. of Hammers, and there were more than a few times where I was like, there's no way this, I can't do, I can't sustain this level of. Of adrenaline from him, <laughs> yeah. and he's just like, dude, he's on like a three. He's not, it's not even pegged it's on. Not his even race pace. Well, he it just got, a, he just got like a big spot in Colorado too, like a ranch, yeah. right? Yeah. He texted me. He's like, you got to come to this ranch. I'm Absolutely. like, where the fuck are you? <laughs> like, Yellowstone. Yeah. Like, he's one of the most versatile drivers out there, Absolutely. right? I mean, yeah. He's competing truly, in so I've many different around, things. Some of the world's greatest drivers and Tanner's in that category every single mm-hmm. time. Like, yeah. You can put him in any. The flexibility. Absolutely. Of, yeah. of skill. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's insane. Uh, Daniel Arndt says, uh, are you going to be in? Yes, we are. He is going to be in Indy next weekend. Who is your favorite to win and your dark horse winner? Ooh, gosh. Um, favorite to win. I think it'd be cool if uh, Alexander Rossi won. I think that'd be awesome. Um, gosh, dark horse. Connor. I think uh, Connor Daly. I I love that dude. It would when he when he made it to the front last year. When you can hear the crowd over the cars, you know something really special is happening. All of us were standing on the roof. All of us got goosebumps. I was like, dude, this could be this could be it. So I really was he a rookie I, last year? No, he's he's probably that's probably his fifth or sixth time. Oh, okay, well, I think, but he's still very much seen as like an underdog. Like it's it's crazy, but. Um, God, that'd be awesome if you won. Cool. That'd be a great one. Yeah. I got to go one of these times. You have to. It's so I, fun. Yeah, I know. I, I know. It's just <clears throat> truly. It's hard to It's hard to go on vacation to car shit, you know? The speed scene. When your like job is car shit, yep. it's tough to go on vacation to one. car like, shit. I, I'd seen the videos, and then we filmed a bit for, uh, um, sorry, Proving Grounds on NBC Sports yeah. with, like, Parker Kligerman yeah, and stuff. Oh, were you there for that one? Yeah, so I went there for the filming, and no we way. flat-spotted a very old tire. Yes, and... I heard all about that. Parker <laughs> is, dude, I love Parker. Yeah, me too, man. I'm so, Have you ever met Parker? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. he's great. He, has he done the podcast? I yes. feel like he has. Yes, yeah. he did at our old studio. Ago. That's right. No, 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 no he, he was here? here? Was yep. he here? Yep. Oh, yeah. 
Dude, he's it to see him this year yeah. and to have that shot at the Xfinity series. Um, that's man, what a proud moment! Yeah, I was so excited when he got that. Me too. He's uh, worked so hard, absolutely, in every way to get back there. And like, and he's he's fast. Yeah, I mean, he keeps having you know interacting with other cars and having unfortunate moments. But like, yeah. it's gonna happen. That yeah. happens. It's gonna it's gonna happen. But they get uh, crazy. But to go back to Indy, you know, we watch the videos in Indy Five Hundred on YouTube, and then you go and stand there, and you go. This place is big, but it's not big enough for 240, for 225. That is way too fast. Weirdest experience of, of working in my life was being there during the pandemic. There was, was no people. Dude, all in, maybe 300 people Whoa. there in the world's largest sporting venue. And I'm wearing a mask by myself standing there. Like, it's just so many layers of weird. That's yeah. really bizarre. And um, because Roger Penske had bought it and done all these changes, there was also like, hey, there's new bathrooms. And I was like, they're, <laughs> they're not open. <laughs> they're all locked, but I believe you. I'll yeah. tell people We had it to it. ourselves for a day. And, Isn't you know, it crazy? Road course, everything. It you, is know the first, you know what the first race there was? What year? Like ever? Yeah, with the very 12, first race. 1912? You know, but what kind of race was it? Oh, it was probably fucking tractors or something. Hot air balloon. <laughs> Hot air balloon. Also, do they go in an oval or do they go A to B? <laughs> One just, side to the other. Yeah, up and down. The, do you know that's the place that gave us the rear view mirror? Here's well, how brilliant. Wow. They, there was a car called the Marmon Wasp. And yeah. they decided, hey, you know, we have to have this crew chief ride with us. And he just kind of looks back and tells us when people are coming, what if we just put a mirror up here? That's like their AI. People were like, jobs elimination. <laughs> <laughs> right like, like what's happening yeah but it, dude it worked and that's that's the place that gave us the rear view mirror wow isn't that wild was that yeah. after had they run had that team already ran a race and then the next year they went what about mirrors I think so I think the like, technology really does trickle down shit. it really does right <laughs> to the street cars this is amazing this is amazing what's the oldest car you've ever driven ooh mm. probably early uh, late twenties. You ever drive a Model T? Never tried a Model T. No, yeah. always wanted to. Yeah, you got to try. Because that's the one. Is that the like? It's the all Spark kinds of Vance weird. Yeah, yeah, it's all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah, I before to. the before the late twenties is when controls are like anything could do anything. <laughs> you never even really know. Just put a gadget on there. It'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> yeah, no standardization. No, What's mind. Everyone who's gonna buy this has never been in a car before, so it doesn't matter. It'll be great. Have you ever driven a, a factory five truck like Joey Logano's? Have you gotten to shake one of those down? A factory five truck. Oh, yeah. like his crazy drift yeah, like truck. They, they make a they. It's like a thirty. I think it's a thirty three. Oh, I didn't know style. they do those. I've driven other yeah. factory five shit. I've never driven their their truck. I didn't know they made yeah, that. Yeah, it's cool. Joey cool? put a, one of his old cup motors that he had won in uh, with it, and then he kind of turned into a drift truck. Yeah. You know that I had it's a Cobra. I had a awesome. I had a Superformance so Cobra. Oh, I forgot that. Back in the day, okay. that had oh that looks rad. That truck. Yeah. Oh, so kick cool. ass, dude. So I had this Cobra that had a Bill Elliott practice motor in it. No way. From the 80s, like an 89. Absolutely. 353 cubic inch that revved to 9,000 RPM Glad and me. had a, an MSD limiter in it at six so you, like, didn't die. No With a Jericho crash box. Uh, I was 24 when we bought this thing. It was a death trap. Absolutely. I didn't know how to drive for shit. Boy, where's that thing now? Oh, fucking who knows. <gasps> actually, last we heard, it was lived at Spring Mountain, actually. Someone no bought kidding. it as a track rat. And It'd be they, perfect for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my my Fox body's at Thermal. No. That's someone's, like, little track Gosh, beater. They put cop lights thing. on it and painted the doors white. Come on. And put a fucking shotgun in it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. The interior's still the same. It's still that LA The door interior. cards are, <clears throat> but they changed the seats to some more, like, racy seats. Yeah. But they might still have the originals. The, when awesome. I saw the fabric, I was like, that was the right choice. Yeah. Shit is dope. Really? Yeah. Really wise. Uh, the show is NBC right. primetime. What time? May 30th. Yeah. Premieres at 10 p.m. right after your favorite show, America's Got Talent. Yes. Soon to be second favorite show after mm -hmm. our show airs. That's is there right. going to be a guest spot cross promotion thing? Maybe. Yeah, you buddy. Brilliant producer, you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I man. might have Heidi Klum's number, or I have someone in my phone that I've labeled as Heidi Klum. <laughs> <laughs> you won't know which one. That's a fun game. But it's, uh, it's all, yeah, it, it's all. That's, that's your vision board. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I I hope you see it. But there's a part where I definitely receive a phone call from Heidi Klum, and I end it by saying, "Okay, 
Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked off and I was like, I've done something yes! here today. Did you produce the show or did you have no. any? Okay. Just it felt a little you. bit like it because I got there and I was just supposed to be uh, the host. And then they also asked me to judge. And I was like, why? And they're like, you know a lot about cars. <laughs> and we are really seeing that. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm, I'm in. So Sweet. yeah, ten, at 10 p.m. on NBC or it'll be available on Peacock the next day for free. My number one thing to all the car people. There's no other major network that is trying to give us a show that is remotely cool for cars. Please watch it. Love it. It's all about the connections of people. Some people think we should put a waterfall in your waterfall. It's not like Pimp My Ride. Uh, it is watching other people's dreams come true, and I think that's what's so cool about it. But That's awesome. Uh, I hope you all like it. That's Thanks awesome. for having me. Appreciate Thanks for having coming. me. To the such, a, so dude, such a treat Shut to have up. you here. Thanks for everybody. You're the that, fucking that proper watched. gentleman. You are literally the, the nicest sweetest. person on television. Well, that's really nice. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. And I, when I met you, I was like, I'm not even mad this guy has the job I so wanted these anymore. these mics are off, I'm going to accost you. I'm going <laughs> to so many words coming away. Zach, I said earlier, uh, it's so cool to get to meet you, to see the way that you have taken this, the team that you guys have built here, and how great you are at doing stuff. Um, I love it. I love watching you on camera. It's awesome. Thank you. Dude. I really keep, appreciate keep that. Keep crushing it, man. Yeah. Next year, we'll franchise... East Side Collector Car Storage. I you, me, and Killer Mike. I can't wait to call we'll Mike and tell him what we're going to do. Those are the only people that I would do it with. I love it. And we'll put it in a location that's too far for me to keep my cars. <laughs> so that's another seven or eight <laughs> spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Otherwise, you'll keep ordering stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a, oh, this is a dangerous business to be in. If you Can wanted. you imagine if I had real money, the stuff I would be buying? Like, I wouldn't be buying K-Trucks. I'll tell you what. <laughs> we'd, be, we'd be moving this shell with lots of fun. You'd have a good we'd, collection. You'd have, like, I feel like you would have the import version of what Bo Bachman has. That's a perfect way to put it. I yeah. agree. You've seen Bo's collection? I've not it's, seen it in person. Oh, I've it's seen awesome. the visits that people take, and I'm like, bro. Yeah. While you're, he's, while he's you're in town, it's Good worth people. a visit there. Hell yeah. He's, he buys all kinds of And he of seems weird. like a great guy. Right? So, nice. <clears throat> so nice. Homie's got four Lagondas. Which is four more than <laughs> yeah. really anyone should own. They're so... Including a wagon and Evil oh, Knievels. Okay, Evil Knievels is the number one. Yeah. They're so ugly, mm -hmm. but yet so cool at the I, same yeah. time. Yeah. So big and so uncomfortable inside. Are Very they small. Really? It's like a Hummer. It I was going to say, is it, is it like an H1 Hummer? Yes, it is. You the ergonomics in, like, are pretty all the terrible. Space? Even I was trying to describe that to terrible. my daughters. We were behind one at like school drop-off, and they were like, is that cool? And I was like... It is cool. It's different cool. Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, H2, far, far nicer, more usable vehicle mm -hmm. in every way. I was like, I said, if you hold your hand out, we would maybe touch in an H1. It's got four Spirit Airlines middle coach seats. The <laughs> worst seats I've ever <laughs> sat on, ever. Right? It's, awesome. it's shockingly bad. So bad. I, I saw a lifted one people? on the highway towing a side-by-side, -side and I was passing Oh, him. that was when we were coming back from- uh, Was it with you? Yeah, you were and with I, me. I said, N I've never seen someone so uncomfortable while trying to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But these guys That's in Detroit- I did turn one into a drift truck, and it worked really well. I think I saw that. Yeah. But I still, the whole time, was like, I just don't understand. Well, it's mid-engine, front right. mid, and it, and they made it make like a 1,000 horsepower with a Duramax, and it's and they made it rear drive with an Allison gearbox with paddle shifters, and it just worked. That's brilliant. They took out the portal axles, too, so it fucking oh, nice. so it looked like it was there. slammed. Yeah, it was yeah, cool. That's, that's, that's all right. It it's just good dynamics. It, man. Actually, it's like an I, I can get with that. It did uh, actually work. It was the only cool one I've ever driven. I really want that Supra that's in the basement. I'm going to start working on that. Yeah. That thing is. And, and the E30. Dude, 98 Royal Sapphire Pearl, uh, six-speed manual. That's, that's my dream car. I've got a 93 twin-turbo Supra that's automatic, and every time I see it, I'm like, I can swap it. You can. Or I could just... Is it a JDM one? Is it a right-hand no, drive? No, right, it's left-hand oh, drive. Okay. Love it. Why don't you just swap it with manual? Have your, your dudes do it. Do you know how much a gearbox is? For I have a they're really right expensive. Now? They're like ten grand yeah. with 180,000 miles on it. Yeah, the gearboxes are really, the really expensive. I, Hurt has a buddy who I think has a 161 that I could get. And is that the five-speed? Uh, no, it's the JDM six-speed. It just has slightly different oh. gears on a couple of them. Oh, okay. Some people think it's a little bit better, but that get drag, get, get rag, how do you guys say it? Yeah, get drag. Get drag. Get drag. Yeah. It always feels like I'm saying it wrong no matter yeah, what. Yeah, I, I understand. It's, I agree. It is so breathtakingly expensive. And the, I don't want to do like a CD09 from a 350Z. It'd be fine. It's just not. I'm feeling, no, you want the real do thing. It right you want the real yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, the Ricardo six-speed in an 044 GT is $35,000. <laughs> 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow, don't screw that up. Yeah, right? it's the strongest manual transaxle ever built. I believe you. Yeah. They run like 2,500 horsepower through those stock gearboxes. Oh, I yeah. never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're Stand, right. All those standing mile cars, they <clears> run <throat> stock gearboxes. That's, That's what's crazy. so impressive yeah. about that car. They built it quickly. Yeah, the car's yeah. really over-engineered. That's yeah. awesome. Boys, thanks yeah. for having me. Rutledge Wood, baby. See That's you guys. how it goes. Bye. Good time.